everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing and estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. We'll defer until the second half, and they are ready to kick it away with Unmissing this evening as they host the Galesburg Silver Streaks. I'm Sean Seacrease along with Blue Devil alumnus Jim Hansen. Bo for taking care of us back at the 1039 The Fox Studios. Our broadcast tonight is also available at QuincyJournal.com. Just click the QJTV link and you can watch a television broadcast of tonight's Quincy High Galesburg football showdown at Fling Stadium. The Blue Devils will move right to left. Unmasig is set to put the left foot to it and he boots this one deep into Galesburg territory. Galesburg backs up, takes it at their own one, moves left to right with the silver helmets, the white tops, and the black pants. Breaking it outside to the 30, cross the 35, out to the 37. Galesburg rides a big return to the outside from Ben Holloway. Holloway, the Western Big Six's leading rusher, he does it all, Jim, and he gets them 36 yards on that return to set him up near midfield at their own 37, 38. Yeah, he showed you some moves there coming out of the break, uh, took it up the gut of the field, then broke to his right side and was able to make a shifty move and make a tackle miss, and here we are at the 36-yard line. We have got to contain him here tonight. Galesburg first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. Near side hash marks, their first possession moving left to right. We'll watch Malik Bondin for the Devils as he eyes up. And now a flag on the first play of the game as offsides is going to be called against Galesburg. Jake Ferguson, the wide receiver, right in front of the side judge, just jumped right into the neutral zone. Well, we don't mind that, that's for sure. You know, um, if I'm not mistaken, I thought Galesburg this year was going to the uh, pistol spread, quick uh, they planned Oregon on that. style attack, and uh, tried it for the first three weeks, didn't work out. Peary Notre Dame had the opposite success. It's going to be one man in the back behind Isaacson. That's Holloway. Out of the pistol now for Isaacson. Turn around, give it to Holloway on the read. Isaacson going to give it, and Holloway takes it to the 35. It'll be a pickup of just two for Holloway as they start him inside after the late show and then give by Isaacson. Yeah, good push by the Dev Devils defensive front led by Cooper Bowles. Three or four guys were there on the tackle. Uh, interestingly <clears throat> enough, Gilsburg comes out, single wide receiver trips to the far side. Now they come out empty backfield. They're going to put Holloway in the slot. I imagine they're going to try and get him lined up one-on-one. -on -one. That's going to be range. J.J. Range now put Holloway in motion. Fake it to him. Isaacson keeps it. Falls over the 37-yard marker. And he's down shy of the 40 at the 39. It'll be a pickup of four. And that will bring up a long third down after the five-yard penalty to open this drive for Galesburg. They'll be looking at third and eight. Luckily for the Blue Devils, he fell because he had enough running room. I think he could have picked up the first down. Isaacson gets three on his first carry. Now third and a long eight coming up for Galesburg. Moving left to right on the first game's first possession. We're scoreless. Man in motion. It's Holloway. Give it to him. Looks to get off the left end. Blue Devils think they get held. They'll stretch it out with Holschlag. He gets help at the edge, and they pound Holloway out at the 45. That's not going to be enough for the first down. So right away, Galesburg head coach Tim Dougherty has to think about whether he wants to go for it on fourth down near midfield. Boy, this would be a gutsy call on the road. Holloway gets six. He's got eight on two carries. Galesburg wants to go with twin wideouts to the near side. That's range. Flanked by Ferguson, the man who took the penalty to put him behind the sticks. Galesburg going to go with a short snap and a little pooch punt. Blue Devils will take it at their own 23. Try to get outside now. Dance back inside to the 25, the 30. Blue Devils hit at the 35. Carry them out to the 40. And the Blue Devils will have great starting field position at their own 40-yard line off the return by Brock Miller. Oh, we yeah. saw Brock Miller have a big impact last week on the road at Moline. Yeah, he's a shifty runner. And, man, he is elusive and he runs hard. So the Blue Devils get it at their own 40. Devils with their first possession of the night. We are scoreless here at Fling Stadium. Ten minutes to go, first quarter. Devils 5-2, looking to be 
into the IHSA playoffs with a win here tonight. Wing T, man in motion, give it to Unmasig, slashing left. Unmasig hit at the 40, drags the pile out to the 43. He'll be down there after a gain of three. That's become the calling card for Unmasig, Jim. Put him in motion and just slash him left behind Prost off left tackle. Yeah, and he's a good hard runner coming around uh, left end, like you said, around pro sets up a uh, uh, second and a long six and a half. But, uh, you know, positive yards, uh, setting up the outside, hopefully inside out. One thing I noticed about Galesburg and looking at their roster, they're not as big as they have been in the past as far as along the front. I mean, they got a lot of guys 5'11", 250, a couple guys that are 6'2", but... You know, not the 6'5", 270-pounders like we've seen in the past. Devils go single back. That's Robbins. He dances out to the 45. He'll be stopped there on the inside as Galesburg does good work with Colin Dowers. Dowers, the 5'9", 200-pound junior, playing on that defensive line. So now the Devils will look third and five. Yeah, one other thing uh, to note, their defensive line got a good push there. I'm interested to see uh, number 60 for Ricketts if he's going to get some playing time. He's a freshman, the younger brother of a kid that left last year who uh, took a scholarship actually to Western, but uh, I haven't seen him yet tonight. Yeah, Matt is the younger brother. Mark was the older brother. Here's the pass outside to Osborne. Osborne off the flip. is bottled up at the 46. He'll be drugged out after a gain of one on a stretch pass to the right side wing, and the Devils will look at fourth and four from their own 46, and in comes the punt crew. Yeah, that was a lot of dancing around by Osborne after he caught the pass. He, you know, Fred has stared it up and down and moved his feet right and left and got to the sideline and danced, but he never got up upfield and uh, was never able to pick up a positive yard. Sets up fourth and down for the Blue Devils. Blue Devils looking at fourth and five. They have the punt crew on. Blue Devils pick up the rushers and a high arcing punt. Oh. He's going to hit oh. it to 22, and it takes a Galesburg bounce out to the 23 where it'll be down. Had that hit the nose and gone toward the end zone, Devils would have been able to back Galesburg up deep in their own end. Each team has had a possession. Each team has gone three and out. Galesburg comes onto the field. They'll have it first and ten in a scoreless game at their own 20. They're going to mark it at the 21-yard line, so the Devils get a bit of a break. Yeah, I was uh, exasperated there going, oh, oh, that's because I was waiting for what we see happen to the Blue Devils all the time. The guy fair catches, it gets out of the way, and then it rolls another 15, 20 yards, and we get it at our four-yard line. Of course, that doesn't happen to us, and it took a wedge hop with some backup spin and went backwards. And is that how you get out of the bunker? I wish. Erickson on the handoff to Holloway. Holloway's hit at the 22, falls forward to the 23. Give him a gain of one on first down. Well, the Devil defense have done a good job of putting Galesburg in second and long here early. Yeah, they sure have. Got a good push of the front four up there. Let uh, the linebackers come in and clear up. The uh, interesting thing will be here tonight, how many times Isaacson running that stretch pass or stretch play actually pulls the ball away from Holloway and keeps it himself. That looked to be really open the first time they ran that when he fell. 7.30 to go first quarter. We're scoreless. Twins to the near side. Galesburg operating far side hash marks. Moving left to right. Isaacson back to pass. He's under pressure. Devils chase him inside his own 10. He bootlegs out clean now. Comes up the near side. Throws it away and just saves the down and distance for Galesburg. Smart move that time by the junior. Peyton Isaacson. Six feet tall. 170 pounds. He ended the season last year as their quarterback. And he's got a different backfield behind him this year with Holloway and Range rather than Jonathan Mixon, who was really just a one-man whirlwind for so many years for this Silver Streak program. Yeah, I give the kids some credit. That was a heady play. He got out of the tackle box and just threw it away. Ate the down, but saved the distance. Third down and nine for Galesburg. They're going to come twins to the near side, working off the inside hash mark far side. One man back with him, that is Holloway. Out of the pistol, going to hand it off, and Holloway is up the middle. Holloway's going to get out for a first down to the 36-yard line. Holloway rips off 13 on 39 right up the middle. Yeah, that can't happen to the Blue Devil defense here tonight, or it's going to be a long night. Third and nine, you let him rip off 13 yards right up the, right up the gut. Went right behind his center guard tackle. That is the first first down for either team here this evening. We're down to 7-10 to play in the first quarter. Two running teams going at it, deflating this clock in a hurry. It's another stretch play, handoff, and this time Holloway nowhere to go. He's hit by Bondin in the backfield. It'll be a loss of about a half a yard, and Bondin won that one, hitting him in the hole and driving him back. Yeah, and you know Malik Bondin's had a few of those big plays here in the past few weeks where he's absolutely just exploded some plays. like to see a bunch of those here tonight. 
Second down and a long 10 for Galesburg as they're at their own 36-yard line. Twins to the near side, one man on the high side, put Holloway in motion, pull it back on the stretch play up the middle for Isaacson. Nowhere to go. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage again. Yeah, and it, I couldn't see who made the tag. It was Hoslog or Schluter, but uh, Isaacson almost got caught in that no man's land. He leaped over our defensive tackle who was on the ground, and right when he was in the air is when they uh, tackled him and slammed him down to the ground. Yeah, Cooper Bowles doing a good job of plugging up the inside. You mentioned it, Holschlag, he got up and celebrated with a couple of guys as I think there was more than one blue hat in on that tackle. Six minutes to go, first quarter, still scoreless. Galesburg looking at a third down and ten from their own 36. It's trips to the near side. They want to throw a short pass. Isaacson's being chased. Oh, the no. play breaks down. Devils give up the middle of the field, but a great individual tackle by the Devils. Have Isaacson stop for no gain right up the middle. Bondin didn't get over aggressive. He was assigned to coverage, broke it off. It came up and hit Isaacson right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they faked it one way. Isaacson was, Isaacson was trying to set up the middle screen back uh, to the wide receiver coming under got pressured and uh, was able to scramble a little bit, but like you said, Bonnet came up, broke down nicely, and was able to make the tackle. Five and a half to go first quarter. Now Galesburg on fourth and ten, going to punt from back inside their own 30-yard line. Galesburg sets up on a very short punt set. Here's a short kick, end over end, hits at the Blue Devil 40. Devils will just walk away from it. Galesburg downs it when it stops at the Blue Devil 32. Devils will have it first and ten at their own 32. So no one able to establish momentum here early, Jim. Devils at their own 32. But we've seen this devil rushing attack sometimes take a series or two to gel. Yeah, and uh, this is the old epitome of the slow Blue Devil start. That uh, cold night, kind of work your way into it a little bit. Uh, offense kind of gets uh, motivated and gets a little fire and sweat going after about uh, the first quarter. Wing T from their own 32, move right to left, handed off to Unmasig. He comes around the corner at the 35, now the 40. Drug down from behind at the 45-yard line, and it's a gain of 13 for Unmasig. Yeah, he was drugged down by his jersey from the back by Christian Powers, the linebacker number 44 for Galesburg. Otherwise, he would have had a chance to, to make a move there on the corner who was being blocked and uh, maybe take it to the house. Right now, the Blue Devils have committed to running Unmasig early. Two carries, 16 yards, that one for 13. That's the long play from scrimmage for the Devils here tonight. First down and 10 at their own 45-yard line. Near side hash marks moving right to left. It's the wing tee behind Kirkard. Hand this one off to Robbins. Nowhere to go. Robbins is going to be hit and thrown back by two silver streaks. So Hayda and Dowers had him right at that point of attack. Yeah, and you know, it's going to be tough running in there maybe tonight for Malik. I certainly don't like uh, to see, you know, the Duke devil offense with line and uh, him sulking on their way back uh, to the huddle. You know, that's going to happen. Pick your head up and uh, try and get him on the next play. But Unmissing certainly has been effective here tonight. I wonder if we'll see more of him and Robbins to the outside uh, as opposed to inside the tackle box. Now the man who's usually gone outside has been Osborne. He has the one catch on a stretch pass. Now they're going to go twins high. Three men in the backfield. Turn around, hand it off to Unmusig, running left. He's buried behind his blockers. Turns it up at the 50, now the 45. He's into Galesburg territory, and will they give him the first down? The initial mark is yes. He picks up 11. And uh, I'll praise Malik uh, Robbins on that play. He came around as the lead blocker and absolutely buckled somebody from Galesburg. It looked like number 23, Tavian Servant, no, I'm sorry, it can't be him. 24, Aaron Wickline, the defensive back, uh, dang near buckled his knees and got him right under the chin strap and was able to lead block for that first down. Unmissing has been converting first downs on this drive for the Blue Devils. Now the Blue Devils are going to come out wishbone behind Kirkard. Going to turn around, pitch it, going to go outside with Osborne. This is the home run play. Can he set the edge? He'll be drugged down at the 41-yard line. Ball is on the ground. Galesburg thinks they jumped on top of it, and there's no signal yet from the official. The referee has not signaled. Osborne put it on the ground when he was going around to the right side. They are unpiling the young men down on the far side, right on top of the number four, the 40-yard line, and it's going to be Galesburg ball. Blue Devils give it away on their first drive that picked up a first down here tonight. 3.50 to go in the first quarter. Galesburg comes up with the first turnover of the night. Yeah, negative one now in the turnover margin. You know, you're driving, you've created first downs, you put the ball on the deck. Unacceptable. And you know what's eerily uh, 
haunting about this. You ever notice that every time there's a fumble in this game, it's usually on one side's bench, and that side is going crazy, and the officials are seem to be right over there on their sideline? Twins to the near side, a single receiver to the far side. Now Holloway goes far side. Twins right and left for Erickson. Put a man in motion. That's Holloway. Going to hand it off to Holloway on the stretch. Blue Devils had him bottled up in the backfield. Now let him go. He's up the gut for a gain of five out to the 46. Blue Devils miss an opportunity for a three-yard loss as Holloway gains five across the 45 to the 46. Cooper Bowles had him about three yards deep in the backfield. And mind you, that's a D tackle trying to tackle a running back one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, but, you know, he did a nice job, and there was just no other help there to, to aid in the tackle. Second down and a long five coming up for Galesburg. Under center, they're going to go both men in the backfield, going to hand it off short to the fullback. That is Range. Range is going to careen across the 50. He'll be down to the 47-yard line and a first down for Galesburg on a pickup of six. Range's first carry moves the sticks tonight for the Silver Streaks. Into Blue Devil territory for the first time this evening. Galesburg looking at first and 10 at the Blue Devil 47-yard line. The Blue Devils trying to put themselves into the playoffs with a win tonight. They are 5-2. Turn around, hand it to Holloway. Holloway tap dances at the line, now breaks right off of his right tackle, and he'll be thrown down at the 41. Gain of six for Holloway on first down. Yeah, you know, that's the problem. We were earlier in the quarters uh, committing them to, you know, second and eight, second and nine, and now second and four, five, or six is a heck of a lot different uh, down in distance that uh, the offense can manipulate. 2.45 to go first quarter. We're scoreless at Fling Stadium. The final Western Big Six Conference meeting between these two rivals. Galesburg, back to pass, handed out on the stretch play, right up the middle. They're going to run it with range, his second carry. He is hard to tackle, low and powerful, and down to the 34. Range picks up seven yards. J.J. Range, 5'7", 175 pounds. I believe he's the son of Joey Range, the former basketball player from Galesburg. First and 10 at the Blue Devil, 34. Galesburg with the deepest penetration of either team toward their goal line. Isaacson, the junior. He's got the I formation behind him with Range and then Holloway. Turn and hand it to Holloway. Range throws the block. Blue Devils hit Holloway at the 30. They'd stop him short after a gain of four. 36 yards on eight carries for Ben Holloway. The Western Big Six is leading rusher coming into the game tonight. 137 carries for 839 yards on the season. And Holloway has Galesburg second and six at the Blue Devil 30. Under two minutes to go. First quarter from Flynn Stadium as we are playing between the rain showers. Isaacson up under center now, going to turn around, hand it to Holloway. Holloway wants to run right. He's got some room into the secondary, down to the 20 and into the red zone. Holloway picks up 11 yards. Well, here's the uh, reason why he's the leading rusher in the conference right now. You know, they're just picking us apart and uh, have decided uh, we're just going to run down. They're going to power eye. They've ditched the uh, spread from the shotgun. It's just power eye, range leading Holloway, pick a side. From the eye formation again. Under center, they're going to go with Range this time. He steps up into the hole, Bowles has him, and Range will be brought down after a short gain of three. 16 yards on three carries for J.J. Range. Isaacson, the quarterback, one carry for positive yards. That got three. He's been stopped twice on quarterback runs for no gain. Holloway, 47 yards on nine carries. Second and seven at the Blue Devil 16. Galesburg operating in the Devil Red Zone now. Out of the eye, handed to Holloway. He jumps back to the 15, and he'll be stopped there. Devil linebackers are now starting to understand how Galesburg is attacking him, and they do a great job of stepping up into the hole with Stephen Sharp. Yeah, and uh, this is the old bend but don't break philosophy for the uh, Blue Devils. They worked twice last week. Yes. Scoop and score. <laughs> Galesburg has been prone to put it on the ground occasionally. 45 seconds to go first quarter. Third and five at the Blue Devil 14-yard line. Galesburg looking for a new set of downs or pay dirt. Out of the pistol. Isaacson, he's going to give it to Holloway. Now oh. keeps it for himself. Oh, he's nice going to be play. hit at the 12-yard line and brought down just outside the 11. Nice play by Seth Hoschlag. Now, i got to be honest with you. I don't really know much about Galesburg's kicker. I haven't seen these stats, but uh, i got to believe fourth and... 
Oh, they're going to let the quarter run out. So they'll have time to think about it here as we go to uh, go to break. Fourth and a long two coming up for Galesburg from the Blue Devil 12-yard line. We're scoreless after one quarter at Fling Stadium. The Devils try to shut out Galesburg's drive next on 103.9 The Fox. Your end zone for everything. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Three, or look for a new set of downs inside the 10. Galesburg's head coach, Tim Dougherty, started this season, as Jim alluded to in the first quarter, in the pistol spread. They scrapped that after three games, and they've had a little bit more success. They're going to go for it with Isaacson out of the pistol. Holloway is behind him, twins to the far side. Galesburg from the far side hash mark now moving right to left. Isaacson looking to the bench for help. The quarter has not started and will on this snap. The Devils with 11 men in the box turn around, hand it off to Range. He's not going to get it. The Blue Devils come up big and turn Galesburg over on downs. Range is stopped after a gain of one and it'll be Devil football first and 10 at their own 11. Yeah, a great push by the Blue Devils defense and that uh, would be their left side, the Galesburg right side. Uh, you know, a little curious on the call. I'd, I'm surprised you didn't give it to the leading rusher in the conference. And instead, you let Range try and get it. So the Blue Devils stop Galesburg on downs and get it at their own 11-yard line. Now the Devils just have to continue their momentum and not turn it over. We're starting to get some scores coming in from around the conference. Hey, Rock Island got an early touchdown against Moline, 7-0 Rocky, to the surprise of absolutely no one. Devils turn around, put it on the ground, pick it up with Cricard. He's got to make lemonade out of lemons, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Blue Devils living dangerously. Disastrous. Putting it on the ground twice. They've turned it over once already. And not only putting it on the ground, putting it on the ground on your 11-yard line. Devils have just stopped Galesburg's drive. Galesburg picked it up at their own 42 after Osborne's turnover. Drove it to the Blue Devil 11 where they were stopped going forward on fourth and three. That tells me Galesburg isn't thinking about the kicking game much tonight. No. Second and nine after a gain of one for Cricard. Blue Devils at the line, run it out of the wing tee. Osborne comes near side. He's got the 15, got the corner of the 20, 25, and he's out of bounds. They'll mark him out at the 23-yard line, but it's going to be enough for a first down for the Blue Devils on a gain of 10 for Osborne. He was off to the races if he could have stayed in bounds. Boy, that was a sprint to the sideline and see who can get there first. And I saw Holloway coming from across the field. I would have liked to have seen that one-on-one -on -one battle down the sideline. 11.06 to go in the first half. We are scoreless at Flame Stadium. Each team has had three possessions now. This is the Blue Devils' third possession of the game. And only Galesburg on their last drive has found the red zone. Both teams have done a precipitous amount of rushing. In fact, they've combined for just two pass attempts so far tonight. Everything else has been on the ground, and it's been working for both teams. Blue Devils come to the line, first and 10 from their own 23. Near side hash mark, put a man in motion. That's unmistake. Fake it to him, give it to Robbins up the middle. He's out to the 25. He'll be stopped there after a gain of two. Yeah, we're just not getting any solid push at the point of attack between the center and guard gap. Gillsburg's number 66, big Mark Ojeda, 5'8", 220, and uh, some of their other defensive linemen up there, just we cannot get any movement whatsoever from a leak. Ojeda's a cafeteria wrecker 
220. Double handoff, go far side for Unmasig. Unmasig has the corner, he's at the 30. The 35, cuts it back near the 40, and the Blue Devils pick up another first down with Unmasig on the far side. Yeah, nice hard run, and actually Kirkard got out there in front uh, to help throw a block for his running back, which is a good sign. Blue Devils take it from the 25 all the way out to the 38-yard line. That's a pickup of 13 for Unmusig. He's got 40 yards on the night on four carries and a vote of confidence for Osborne. He fumbled it earlier. They gave it to him for the double handoff, and his confidence seems to be intact here early in this second quarter. We're scoreless. Devils first and 10 from their own 38. They're going to come... Flanker out wide on both sides. Handed up the middle to Robbins. Robbins fights his way to the 40 for a gain of two. And right now, Galesburg he is selling out with their linebackers and linemen on Robbins. Yeah, that time Ryan Darby, number 42, made a tackle. Now, you know, Malik's not a – Malik's got to understand he can't get his head down. I mean, he's, he's there. That, that is the position in this offense that gets beat up the most. I mean, that's your fullback. Yep. Most people know it as. You know, you're going to get the one, two yards. you got to always keep running forward. Keep gaining positive yards. Don't lose yardage. And you're the guy who's trying to, you know, you can bust one great, but otherwise, you know, you're helping set up uh, things like this wishbone right here. Wishbone now for the Blue Devils. Robbins are going to pitch it outside to Unmasig. He runs right at the 40, the 45, the 50. Unmasig is gone. 60-yard touchdown for Unmasig as he heads to the house and the Blue Devils break on top. 6-0 with 9.37 to go. You mentioned it. Running Robbins inside, set up the wishbone, and Unmasig takes it to the right on a design play for the first time tonight. Catches the Galesburg defense out of step and takes it 60 yards to the house. Yeah, nice run, nice cut. Set up his blocks, waited for the guard to get outside, and then he uh, hit that gap and was gone. Now Unmasig will look to add his own extra point. Blue Devils take the lead with 9.37 to go in the first half. Unmasig set to kick the PAT on the west end of Flynn Stadium. Not any wind to talk about here tonight, though it is chilly and damp. The extra point is good, and the Devils will kick it away to Galesburg next. The Blue Devils strike first on a 60-yard touchdown by Unmasig. They lead it 7-0 over Galesburg on 103.9 The Fox. This is your home. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing, and estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. 3-9, the Fox instant replay. Let's go now for the Blue Devils. Robbins are going to pitch it outside to Unmasig. He runs right at the 40, the 45, the 50. Unmasig is gone. 60-yard touchdown for Unmasig as he heads to the house and the Blue Devils break on top. 6 nothing. Well, it was a thing of beauty. Unmasig's speed in the open field, Jim, but that play was well blocked in front of him. Yeah, and he waited to, to get that guard out on a kick out. It kind of was a nice kick out seal on the inside, and there was a straight shoot like running down a hallway. And actually, you know, <laughs> I didn't see it there till the end, but Holloway was coming from the other side. Unmistake caught him out of the corner of his eye, luckily, and was able to, uh, you know, kick it into another gear just to make, that, make sure it wasn't close. The kickoff taken by Holloway at his own nine. He's out across the 25 to the 28, 29. The Galesburg coaching staff is yelling for a face mask, but I don't see any flags down on the far side. So with 9.30 to go in the first half, it'll be the Blue Devil defense trying to shut down the Silver Streak offense with the Devils up 7-0. From their own 28-yard line, the Silver Streaks are going to set up with twins to the near side. Silver Streaks moving right to left here in the second quarter. Two men back, and now they're... Motion one man out of the backfield. Isaacson hands it off to Holloway. Holloway is hit at the 30 and stopped there for a gain of two. Nice tackle by Bondin from the backside. Was able to fight through and make the tackle. Boy, I really like to see uh, him be a little more aggressive and a little more active like he's been in the last two weeks. You know, I just don't like when we pinch him in those gaps and, you know, run him out of a play so early. Give him a chance to use his ability and flow and really read the play. Isaacson's only gone to the air once, and that was just to dump it on a busted play. 
He's got Holloway behind him. Twins to the near side on second and eight. Turnaround keeper for Isaacson. He's up the middle to the 34. Stop shy of the 35, and that'll bring up third and four from the Blue Devils' 35-yard line. Big play for Galesburg, actually, looking at this uh, from their angle. You know, they, they just gave up a big play. You'd like to keep your defense off the field. You need to make a first down. Keep moving the sticks. And, you know, you're on your own 35, brings up third and five here. It's uh, kind of a must get. Third and a long four. Hand it off to Holloway. He's hit at the 38, spins out to the 39. He's close to the first down. Second effort takes him to the 40. Holloway's got the first down on a gain of four, but not much more. Well, wow, that was a great second, third, fourth, and fifth effort by Holloway to get that on his own. I mean, uh, we stood him up in the hole twice. He kept turning his legs and fell forward enough to get the first down, so give the kid credit on a nice hard run. The Silver Streaks looking to regroup after being pounded by Rock Island last week, 54-20. to I formation behind Isaacson, going to hand it off to the fullback range. Range is up the middle at the 50, cuts it outside into Blue Devil territory. Taken down at the 45 by the Blue Devil secondary. It's a gain of 16 for range. You see, that, that, that's the problem right now with our defense. Boy, we have two wonderful plays, or even a third play where we hold them to four. Yeah, they got the first down. But then we, we seem to give up these 15, 18-yard runs. Um, but I guess we, we've... You know, certainly haven't broken here in the first half. First and ten for Galesburg from the Blue Devil 45. Twins to the short side, far side, off the far hash mark. Isaacson with the I formation behind him. Give it to Holloway. The Western Big Six is leading rusher across the 40 to the 38-yard line. Give him a gain of six. Second and four coming up for the Silver Streaks. Silver Streaks have done a good job early, Jim, of not getting outside themselves and what they want to do to be successful. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, I just. Second and four from the Blue Devil, 39 for Galesburg. High formation, one receiver high and one low. Isaacson under center, turn around. He's going to hand it to the fullback. Went for his own so stretch play, and the fullback will range just punishing would-be tacklers across the 35 down to the 34, and he picks up another first down for Galesburg on a gain of 10. Yeah, you know, it's a gain of 10 when it looks like he's going to be tackled for about uh, a gain of 1 or a gain of 2. And I don't know if it's uh, due to the weather uh, or just bad form tacklers or what, but we've had a hard time in wrapping up and bringing down the ball carrier at or near the point of contact. This would be uh, right in that acronym you hear, the rack. You know, you run after contact. The, the yards that they're getting is uh, quite a bit here tonight. A timeout is on the field. 7.20 to go in the first half. Blue Devils up 7 nothing. Neither team has been charged with a timeout so far. I'm not sure how the officials stop the clock and let both teams kind of huddle up near their sideline. I think there's a player down, number six. One of the uh, Galesburg offensive linemen went okay, down. Okay, he was down. That's Zering, 5'7", 165-pounder. He was so far on the other side in the white shirts, I didn't notice that he was down. He is up and off. First and 10 for Galesburg from the Blue Devil, 33. They're going to hand it off to Holloway. He'll be stopped for just a gain of one as the Devils and Bowles on the inside do a good job of stopping him short. He got some help from all Western Big Six Conference linebacker River Bue in there. Yeah, and that's the, that's the more first down like we like to see, the gain of two or three, you know, good penetration into the hole, good fill by the linebacker. Now, I'd be careful. galesburg has been setting up that eye dive, eye dive, eye dive. Watch the play action pass. Galesburg on that eye formation. They're going to split it out to the offset eye now to the near side. Turn around, fake it to Holloway. Roll out Isaacson, far side. Wants to pass it over the top. It is knocked down incomplete. The Devils get there late and knock it away with Parker Schutte as it was open in the flat. There you go. Play action pass. Fake the dive again, rolled out. Tight end 42 is coming across the middle. Darby wide open. Looked like he couldn't handle the pass. I don't know if it was too fast, too hard, or what. But he was wide open. Third and eight now for Galesburg. Should he just got there. Darby had plenty of time to wrap it up. Should he was late getting there. But when Darby didn't put it away, Should he did a nice job of knocking it out. Out of the shotgun now. Put a man in motion. That's Holloway. Fake it to him. Going to throw over the middle. Open in the corner. Devils need to defend. And the Devils intercepted inside the three. Devils take it away from Isaacson in the far side corner. 
and the Blue Devils come away with a big turnover as Isaacson was looking down the field trying to pick up Michael Moss, the big tight end, and Moss just got beat on the inside. Yeah, it looked like Shuddy made the play. Uh, we finally picked up a wheel route out of the backfield and ran with it one-on-one -on -one and was able to pick off the underthrown ball. So the Blue Devils don't get great field position, but they take the scoring opportunity away from Galesburg. It'll be Blue Devil ball at their own two after the INT leading 7-0 with 6.30 to go here in the first half at home in week eight. That's important. The Devils took one frustrating loss at Rock Island, 19-14, and then took their worst game of the year on the road to all of it and got blown out. Blue Devils hand it off to Robbins. He'll be stopped for a short game, maybe out to the three. And it's going to be second down and long for the Devils. You just This is one of those situations where, sure, it's great to go on a long drive, kill the half, and put points on the board. That's ideal. But if you take it away from a scoring chance for the Silver Streaks, get a couple of first downs, and then flip the field by a great punt, you also get a win there. Yeah, and... Most importantly, we need to get out of our end zone. we got 5.56 and counting here in the first half. We need to at least chew up some minutes, chew up some first downs, and if we do punt, like you said, have it close to where we can flip the field because punting from back here right now is just deadly. 7 nothing. Devils lead, second down and 10 from their own end zone. Galesburg is into the neutral zone, and they know it. Colin Dowers, the nose guard, the junior, came across and absolutely lit up Cooper Bowl. So that's a free five yards for the Devils. Second and five sounds real good right now. Well, you know, that's good discipline. That play is wonderful at any level of football from third and fourth grade on up. If uh, you have the discipline to execute and have a quarterback who can call out the cadence and uh, good for them, we got a free five yards. Second and five, wing T behind Cricard for the Devils. Going to hand it off to Robbins. He finally finds a hole, takes it out across the 10-yard line to the 11. He'll be shy of the first down, but brings up third and one. Yeah, due to the glare here in the uh, press box, I wasn't able to see if he actually tripped or got tripped up by, uh, by a hand reaching out, but it looks like he had a hole and um, wasn't able to, to hit it uh, for, for some more yardage. So the Blue Devils looking at a third and one from their own 12-yard line. I think Robbins was just happy to get across the line of scrimmage without being hit in the backfield on that play. <laughs> Saucer eyes, he's so excited. Five minutes to go, third and one. For card. I thought that was a quarterback sneak. If it's a fumble, the Devils are living dangerously. They've already turned it over once, and the referee signals it's still Blue Devil ball, but I don't think that fumble fumbled forward far enough to get them a first down. Now you're looking at fourth and one again from your own 12-yard line. Well, you're forced to punt. You have to punt. Um, you know, that's just uh, upsetting that you're having quarterback center exchange problems in here in eight. the eighth game of the season, you know, on your own 10-yard line. Blue Devils back to punt with under six heels on his own goal line. Devils lead 7-0, 420 to go. Galesburg jumps into the neutral zone, and they may have just given the Blue Devils a free first down. Oh, it's discipline problems here in the first half for Galesburg, and they give away an opportunity to get the ball back, trailing on the road. If um, I was Coach doing Doherty's got to be oh, incensed. I, I can only imagine uh, if we were doing the radio broadcast right now for Galesburg and we were there, uh, announcers, two good guys who we see year in and year out, they have to be beside themselves because I know we would absolutely be dumbfounded in our press box. 4-10 to go, first half. Devils up 7-0. New life, first and 10 from their own 16-yard line. Devils take it around the near end with Osborne. Jumps over a would-be tackler to the 21. He's down at the 23 on a generous spot for a gain of 7. Blue Devils have it now, second and 3. Well, not only does this take the ball away from Gillsburg and their offense with 3.50 to go where they would have most certainly got it on our side of the 50, it allows the Blue Devils to chew up the clock and hopefully move the chains uh, here to where we get out to possibly a two-minute offense situation from near the 50. Second down and three for the Devils. Near side hash mark moving left to right, leading 7 nothing. Devils in the wing tee behind Cricard. Put a man in motion. It's Unmissig going to take him far side. They seal off the edge. He dances inside, gets the first down out to the 27-yard line. <coughs> and the Blue Devils keep it, move the sticks, and continue to take time off the clock. Here as we count down to the end of the first half, three and a half to go. Devils up 7-0. 
Yeah, and it's clear the most effective plays the Devils have had tonight are either Unmasig wide to one side or Osborne uh, wide to the other. We haven't gotten much up the middle. Um, we really would catch this Galesburg defense off guard if we threw on first down. That's Agreed. for sure. 104 yards on six carries for Unmasig. He is the game's leading rusher tonight, including the 60-yard touchdown. Heavy package with two tight end for the Blue Devils. They'll give it to Robbins. Robbins dances his way out to the 30 where he'll be brought down after a gain of three. Robbins is a very patient runner because he knows he has that explosive gear when he's 100%. But right now, the Galesburg Silver Streak defense is selling out, coming from the corners, either with linebackers or with corners, and bottling up Robbins inside, limiting his ability to break these. Yeah, and like you said, he's patient, and he's patient especially when he knows he's 100%. I don't think he's been 100% since week two of this football season. Second and seven for the Blue Devils, just shy of their own 30. Double handoff go inside for Brock Miller. Brock Miller dances it into the backfield. He's going to be thrown for a loss back at his own 25-yard line. Brock Miller on his first carry of the night loses four. See, if you're going to run that in this situation, I'd rather you just drop back and throw the football. I mean... That's a loss of four. You're now third down and 11, uh, you know, from your own 26-yard line. Galesburg's got, I believe, all three of their timeouts left. They do. I would imagine after this play they're certainly going to use one, and if I'm the Devils, I'm looking to get something going here and uh, trying to hit Holschlag or somebody. Rock Island looking like they're going to take the conference crown tonight. They put three scores on the board already at Moline and lead it 20 to nothing. Well, Coach Little's going to let this clock run down and then call a timeout here. Neither team has used a timeout in the first half, and the Blue Devils will use their first timeout with a minute 41 to go, leading 7 nothing, staring at third and 11 from their own 27-yard line. They're going to give Brock Miller a fantastic spot and call that one a shorter loss than it looked like earlier. It's only going to be a loss of two for the Blue Devils instead of a loss of four. We'll keep this one here at Flynn Stadium for you. Sean Seacrest, Jim Hansen with you as the Devils look to put themselves into the IHSA postseason with a win here this evening. Five and two coming into the night tonight. The Devils' only two losses have come on the road in the Western Big Six. One in a game that came down to the final snap with one second left at Rock Island. Oh, yeah, Rock Island still undefeated at 7-0 after escaping the Devils in that one. And then just a poor performance on the road at Alderman as that game was played at Augustana College. So the Blue Devils looking to go playoff entrant tonight with their sixth win of the year. Meanwhile, Galesburg needs a win tonight and a win next week in the last season just to be playoff eligible at 5-4. Devils come out of the timeout. They'll line it up now third and 11 <coughs> from their own 27-yard line. Devils are going to go tight. One man out wide on each side. One back in the backfield. They're going to fake it. Here's pressure on Krikard. Busted play. He's going to have to get what he can out to the 29-yard line. Krikard picks up two. He was under heavy pressure off the far end as the Silver Streaks brought Ryan Darby, their senior defensive lineman. All right, here, here's what is so confusing about that play to me. You've come out of a taking a timeout, so everyone should know what the play is that you've just called. You just talked it over with everyone, and yet we have guys that clearly have no idea who they're blocking or what they're doing as it looked like a complete jailbreak as Kirkard's running around for his life back there. He didn't have time to do anything but grab the ball and try and get a positive yard. Yeah, the left side just caved in. Now another timeout taken on the field. Neither team has been charged with this timeout yet. Galesburg just took it. Uh, I saw the official signal to Galesburg's side because now it's fourth down. The Devils have to punt. They've done nothing really here on this possession uh, after this new set of downs to, to go anywhere. We saw Robbins gain three. We then saw Brock Miller lose four, and Kirkard struggle there to gain two. So it's been a less than spectacular series on this set of downs for the Devils. 91 seconds to go first half. Devils up 7 nothing, looking to punt with Unmusig out of the timeout. Galesburg's timeout. They try to conserve time on the clock. They're going to put the leading rusher in the Western Big Six, Holloway, back at his own 35-yard line. Unmusig, oh, just a horrible kick. It's a chimney kick, straight up and down. Bounces at the Blue Devil 45, takes a roll out to the 46, and that punt is only going to net the Blue Devils 17 yards 
backing Galesburg up to the Blue Devil 46-yard line with a minute 20 to go. Here's uh, one comment we were talking about uh, after last, last week's kind of strange game at Moline and what happened there. You know, you just rattled off the Rock Island score, which was 20 to nothing. You know, that's a good football team that puts the pedal to the metal and hammers teams and puts them away. We kind of stay around, let teams play in the game, kind of give them a break here, there, and here we are now with a minute 20 to go in the game, up 7 nothing with Galesburg on our 45-yard line. Trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Isaacson back. He fakes the handoff to Holloway. Wants to throw for all of it over the middle. Devils have a chance to intercept it. Brock Miller was the only one close to that as Isaacson dropped back and overthrew his intended target. That was Curtis Bates by about 10 yards. Yeah, that, that wasn't even close. I mean, that was a... Uh, Check it, Michael Moss. That, uh, that had no chance. So, Isaacson, he's 0 for 3 in the passing game here this evening. We go to halftime in a minute 16. The Blue Devils are up 7 nothing, and it's second and 10 for Galesburg. You better keep an eye on Holloway. Trips to the far side. Now Holloway, the personal protector in the backfield. Going to hand it off to Holloway. Holloway at the 45, now the 40. Cuts it up to the 35. He's got a first down to the Blue Devil 34-yard line. It's a pickup of 12, but the clock is running to a minute nine. Now they'll move the sticks. We'll see if Galesburg wants to use a timeout. And here's the problem with that. Our linebackers are sitting seven yards deep from the line of scrimmage at least, if not eight, expecting pass, and Holloway can gash him right up the middle. First down and 10 from the Blue Devil, 34. Clock winds to a minute five. Isaacson out of the pistol, hands it off to Holloway. He's hit at the 30 and stood up there. So Holloway just a gain of three. Clock continues to run until Galesburg takes this timeout. out. 76 yards on 16 carries for Holloway. The clock has stopped. Galesburg has used the timeout. That is their second of the half, and they have one to play with in this final 59 seconds. We'll keep it for you at Flynn Stadium. Coming up at the half, we'll check in on all the scores coming in from around the Western Big Six. The Fox Sports Newsroom will have an update on if this isn't the biggest game of the night, Quincy High against Galesburg, maybe that Cardinal Dodger game from St. Louis, game six of the NLCS going on just south of us. We'll also have the first half highlights as Bo Beecraft have been taking care of us at the studio. And Jim will have his adjustments to the second half all coming up at Blue Devils at the half here on 103.9 The Fox. A reminder, if you're anywhere that you can get data access, Wi-Fi, or uh, maybe you're at home and you've got the hard line hooked in, you can watch tonight's game at QuincyJournal.com. Just log on, click the QJTV link, and you'll be watching tonight in full HD. Jim sounds great in full HD, by oh, the way. let alone how I look. <laughs> 59 seconds to go. Second down and seven for Galesburg. At the Blue Devil, 31. Devils up 7-0. Isaacson, back to pass. Wants to roll it out to the flat. Complete to the far side, and Galesburg gets out of bounds at the 22-yard line as that pass is complete down the line to Iker. Well, the problem there is uh, Unmasig and Brock Miller and other corners are playing 10, 12 yards off. They're going to give them, they'll take, excuse me, a 7, 78 yard out every time. That was just a that was just an eight yard out catch. To yeah. yeah. So he stops the clock by getting out of bounds. Iker is a sophomore, 6'2", 150. Now they got trips to the right side, and we only got two guys over there. One man back, it's Holloway. They'll hand it off. Holloway's across the 20, down to the 18 yard line. He'll pick up four. Clock runs down to 45 seconds. 80 yards on 17 carries for Holloway. Blue Devils lead 7-0. First and 10 for Galesburg in the red zone. It's back to the shotgun for Isaacson. He's got Holloway behind him and trips to the near side. The officials rush in. Flag is thrown by the umpire. Let's see what this is for. That'll back up Galesburg five yards because it's a false start. Whistled against Galesburg. Galesburg, four penalties here in the first half, all of the five-yard variety. But, Jim, they've taken penalties that have been absolutely devastating to the situation that they found themselves in. Yeah, two of them, I believe, uh, gave Blue Devils first downs, one on a punt. Backed up to the Blue Devil, 23-yard line, second and 10. Isaacson is back to pass. Pump fakes it, wants to go for it all to the far side. Blue Devils are going to be called for pass interference on the far side, I have to believe. Oh, no flag as the Devils 
didn't get their head around on defense, but still came away unscathed. The Blue Devils were back to defend. I think it was Unmistake. With Unmistake on the far corner. Yeah, well, this he was certainly, getting some help from Bill Gray. Yeah, this certainly isn't the crew that worked the Rock Island Quincy oh, game. Oh, it wasn't. That would have been probably a penalty and an ejection. 22 seconds to go now, third and 11. Galeberg has committed to taking shots at the end zone, trying to tie this up before half, and why not? Your playoff eligibility life is on the line on the road. Isaacson, one of five for eight yards in the passing game. Going to turn around, fake it, and throw it down the seam. It's intercepted by the Devils. Devils with a chance to return. Out to the 20, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 50. Devils into Galesburg territory at the 42-yard line as the Devils get a big pick and go back the other way with Creasy. Creasy, 45 yards on that return into Galesburg territory, and now the Devils can court opportunity with 10 seconds left on the clock and a 7-0 lead. Well, just uh, overthrew a guy they were trying to get, uh, it looked like their slot receiver down the seam and overthrew him from the linebacker level, and Char or Creasy was just there waiting on it. Caught it and was gone. Now, key thing for the Devils, you got 10 seconds and two timeouts. You can work the middle of the field if you're trying to get a, a uh, here we go, Galesburg hasn't seen this, a swinging gate from Robbins. See, now why don't they run it? I mean, if they're going to, if they're going to line up like that, why are they? Galesburg took a timeout. Oh, okay. Galesburg burned their final timeout. The Blue Devils showed the swinging gate with all the linemen and Cricard on the near side and Robbins in the shotgun behind Bulls the center. See, now Galesburg has no, no more timeouts, so why would they not come out and run the same thing and see what look they get and this time possibly run it? I don't know, but let's go back to, to normal circumstances. If they come out in a normal set, you can work the middle of the field. You have 10 seconds. If you're trying to set up a field goal, you can try and save those by working the sidelines and running quick outs. Whatever they do, they have to understand that they have timeouts to work with, sideline is your friend, and you have a chance for two plays with the 10 seconds. Out of the timeout. Devils with 10 seconds to work with on the clock. First and 10 at the Galesburg 41-yard line. You mentioned Rock Island, a team that doesn't play with its food. It puts it away early. Blue Devils, half a chance here. You'd like to see them get an opportunity to go up by two scores. Yeah, even of the – I mean, I'm not uh, optimistic, don't get me wrong, about a touchdown here, but certainly a field goal attempt with a field goal kicker we have. Now they've come out, and again, let's see what they do. Kirkard is on the gate. far side with Osborne. It's Robbins out of the swinging gate. Now they'll move everybody back into their traditional position. Kirkard will come up under center. The play clock is an option. And the Blue Devils will take a timeout as the play clock was starting to run down. The Blue Devils have showed swinging gate twice. It's resulted in a Galesburg timeout and a Blue Devil timeout. Here's my, here's my total criticism of that play. Why would you do that to waste another timeout of yours? They didn't like the look they got from the Galesburg defense. Well, they ran all the way back to set up the – Kirkard got under center. Yeah, he got under center. It wasn't the wing tee because they only had two men in the backfield. Osborne came with him from that far left flank, and then Robbins, who was there out of the shotgun, in a swinging gate. Yeah, that's a, just a colossal waste of time of guys uh, running around and just wasting energy uh, to, to burn a timeout. Now the Blue Devils only have one timeout to work the middle of the field and or set up the field goal if they want to go for it. Blue Devils are going to come out with twins to the far side, twins to the near side. Robbins will be the man in the backfield behind Cricard, who's in the pistol. Five-man O-line for the Blue Devils, and now they bring a tight end off the line. It's a jump snap, and there's going to be a false start whistled against the Blue Devils. Blue this Devils will take their break. first penalty of this first half. Then the clock needs to go back to 10.1 because no time should run off on a false start. Blue Devils, first penalty of this first half. Let's see if the officials, I'm sure Coach Little has his eye on that clock too, and they should run this back to 10.1. I think Coach Little sees that now, and he's talking to the official on the sideline. Looks like they are not going to reset the clock. The Blue Devils come to the line of scrimmage, now the referee is looking at the official timekeeper in the booth and wants him to reset it to 10.1. Let's see if they can get this done. Blue Devils with twins high and low, moving left to right, leading 7-0. Right now, 8.3 seconds left, but it should be 10.1. We'll see if they get the clock <coughs> issue resolved. 
And I have to imagine that since they have not yet placed the ball down, that they are trying to get the clock reset to 10.1 seconds before giving the Blue Devils an opportunity, and now it has been reset. Devils, twins high and low, five-man O-line. They'll have Kirkard back, and he wants to pass. Kirkard in the pocket. It's going to go for all of it. It is overthrown and incomplete. Galesburg had two men deep as they were trying to squeeze it into Unmasig on a skinny post, and no chance for Unmasig as he was bracketed high and low. Well, if we try that again, George Kirkard might lose his head. He had 65, 66, and 64 all three of them converging on him at the same time as he let that ball go. We have got to get a better pass block scheme and a uh, pocket for our quarterback to set up in if he's going to try and throw a pass. Blue Devils second and 15 from the Galesburg 46. Four seconds to go in the first half. Devils leading 7 nothing, trying to capitalize on a creasy interception before halftime. Throw a quick slant. They're going to go lateral to the near side. Osborne's got it. Osborne's up the sideline. Stutter step. He's down to the 15. Time expires. He's pushed out at the 15-yard line. The Blue Devils show a little trickery, pick up 26 yards, but that 16 yards short of the end zone, and time expires on the first half. The Devils lead it 7-0 over the Galesburg Silver Streaks. You're listening to Blue Devil Football on 103.9 The Fox. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls.
drum majors, Nick Foster, Cody Osborne, and Gabrielle Green. Is your band ready to take the field for competition? Ladies and gentlemen, the Quincy Senior High School Blue Devils go west. And the Fox, I'm Sean Seacrest. Jim Hansen will return in a moment with his keys to the second half. Let's start with our first half stats here on Blue Devils at the half. The rushing game was remarkably similar between Quincy and Galesburg as each struggled to get going in this cold, wet first half at Flynn Stadium. The Blue Devils rushed it 19 times for 135 yards, passed it 2-3 of three for 27, fumbled it once, intercepted Galesburg's Isaacson twice, and the Devils are plus one at the turnover margin here at the half. For Galesburg, they ran it 28 times for 138 yards, were one of five in the passing game for just eight yards, and we mentioned Isaacson intercepted twice, including once at the Blue Devil two-yard line. That's a look at the teams through this first half as the Blue Devils lead 7 to nothing thanks to the 60-yard touchdown run by Unmusig. Unmusig got a great kickout block by the O-line, and he was off to the races 60 yards from his own 40-yard line. He's the game's leading rusher, 104 yards on just six carries. For the Blue Devils, it's Osborne, 17 yards on three carries, and it's a nice recovery for Jordan Osborne because he fumbled it on his first carry of the night and gave that one away. For Kirkard, two rushes for three yards, and Brock Miller, one carry for minus two yards. Robbins, seven carries for 13 yards for the Devils. Osborne with both receptions, 27 yards on his two catches. Holloway leading Galesburg, 80 yards on 17 carries in the first half. Isaacson, one for five in the passing game for eight yards. That completion was to Iker along the far side sideline. So far, it's the Blue Devil defense that's been the story here tonight. With the offense sputtering on a cold, damp night, it's the Devil defense that come up with two interceptions of Isaacson, and they have fulfilled the bend-but-don't-break prophecy that has led them to success in these last two weeks of the season. At the half, it's the Blue Devils over the Silver Streaks, 7 nothing. You're listening to Devils at the Half on 103.9 The Fox.
Van performs on the field at Flynn Stadium for the crowd that is brave the cold and the wet this evening. The Devils are up 7-0 over Galesburg. I'm Sean Seacrease along with Jim Hansen. Jim, let's take a look at some scores from around the conference. We are running early tonight, so not everyone yes. is reporting before halftime. We do know that Rock Island is on top of Moline. It was 20 to nothing at that last update. The other score from around the area, Quincy Notre Dame is having it all their way against West Hancock, 31 to nothing. That is also at the half. That is all we know from around the area as we sit. We'll continue to get those updates from Bo at the 1039 The Fox Command Center and pass them along to you as our second half continues. Coming up on Blue Devils at the half, our first half highlights, and Jim gives us his adjustments for the Devils in the second half. It's always part of our Week 8 coverage of the Blue Devils hosting the Galesburg Silver Streaks. Devils leading 7-0 on 1039 The Fox and online at QJTV.com. From the first snap right, to the last sack, it's Blue Devil two. Football on 103. You can go two minutes. They're going to pitch it outside to Unmissing. He runs right at the 40, the 45, the 50. Unmissing is gone. 60 yard touchdown for Unmissing as he heads to the house and the Blue Devils break on top. 6 0. Out of the shotgun now. Put a man in motion. That's Holloway. Fake it to him. Going to throw over the middle. Open in the corner. Devils need to defend. And the Devils intercepted inside the three. Devils take it away from Isaacson in the far side corner. Those were the key plays for the Devils in the first half. That interception by Creasy cut off Galesburg's drive late as they were looking to even it up before halftime. Instead, the Devils hold on to this first half shutout and lead 7-0. Jim Hansen returns for halftime. And Jim, as far as the Devils go, I think they did what they wanted. They kind of felt Galesburg out in the first half. They lead it home, but now you have to put this team away in the third quarter. Absolutely, and you know, obviously the defense played a lot of bend but don't break there in the first half and made two uh, wonderful stands, one on fourth down and one on the interception there. But uh, the other thing is we need to get our offense to the point where we got more uh, production. I mean, 7 nothing right now uh, with the offense that Galesburg has, uh, this is, you know, uh, it, as, tight as, as tight as you want to have it. And certainly the Devils need to put the pedal to the metal. You know, they need to be like the Rock Islands that get out on a team and, you know, jump and exert their will and establish the line of scrimmage and dominate and uh, hopefully we see that here in the second half. Devils will be looking for that win that puts them into the IHSA playoffs at 6-2 and two with a win here tonight. Galesburg, if they lose, 
their potential playoff season is over. That would drop them to 3-5 and five on the season. Jim, adjustments if you're the Devils looking to put away Galesburg in quarter number three. Well, I think uh, it would help if we got a little more interior rushing. Uh, yes, the uh, outside has been there, and uh, certainly we've got some yardage there, but you can't rely on that the whole game. You've got to get a push in the middle. Defensively, uh, not, nothing really uh, too terrible. If we could uh, limit Holloway a little bit more on uh, you know, some of those uh, 14, 15-yard runs he's been able to break out and you know, realize we're going to give him maybe a 5, 6-yarder. Um, but, uh, you know, I'd like to also see, boy, if we could establish some little uh, diversity with our offense. Uh, we've thrown the ball, uh, but for the last series there, uh, and when Kirkard got killed, I think one other time out of a timeout, and mm -hmm. we couldn't even get the play right. So, you know, Galesburg, wh what incentive do they have to not stack 11 guys at the line of scrimmage and say, okay, you know what, uh, come beat us with your passing game? You know, conversely, I would say the Devils have that incentive too on defense, and for most of the night, the Devils have started 11 in the box. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Isaacson certainly hasn't shown he's a, a passing threat. I mean, uh, he's had some open receivers. He's woefully overthrown them. He's uh, w one should have been caught, but um, you know, <coughs> give Galesburg credit. Uh, they at least have diversified a little bit, and range has been kind of effective here tonight to complement Holloway. So the Blue Devils lead it seven nothing at the half. They look for a six win season and a berth in the postseason in the next 24 minutes. We'll have the second half coming up next on 103.9 The Fox. You're listening to In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Just seconds away from the second half kickoff, it'll be the Galesburg Silver Streaks down 7 nothing to the Blue Devils, kicking it away to Quincy to start this second half. Well, this has worked well for Coach Little this year, deferring until the second half. Yeah, um, until last week when we deferred and got that wonderful shotgun snap that went into the end zone. But um, <laughs> other, other than that, you're such travesty. a nitpicker. The, uh, yeah, I know. I'm, details, that's all... Uh, I'm, that's what I, I get seem for, to focus on. That's what I get for having an attorney for a color player. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, you know, the problem is the Devils have suffered from that um, warmth of the locker room funk, if you will, this year. Oh, there's year. a funk in that locker room. Yeah. <laughs> warmth or not, second yeah. half or not. Yeah. Um, 
you know, but the uh, the start of the third quarter at Moline, the second half at Rock Island where we're shut out completely, all them in just completely, you know, laid an egg. So we uh, certainly have had our second half issues, but um, let's hope we turn it around because at home, you know, we have been have been a different character. Those three games I just uh, talked about were all on the road. So we need to finish here in front of this uh, – crowd that's I think down to about 57 people that we counted well this has been a crowd that has come out and has uh, been hardcore in supporting the Devils tonight down to 43 degrees here as we start the second half uh, it has not rained since we've kicked it off wintry mix is a wintry mix coming uh, I, I don't think you get the wintry mix at 43 I, if we're at 33 I might dare to say that but this Galesburg team has been an interesting opponent they, like Peoria and Notre Dame, changed their offense entirely on the fly in the middle of the season. Galesburg going from a spread pistol attack after week three to a run-based attack with Holloway in week four. That was the week that Peoria and Notre Dame also changed up their offense, the run-based attack, to a no huddle, and they have rolled opponents since then. Blue Devils pick up this toe poke roller at their own 20, take it out to the 25-yard line, and they'll set up first and 10 at their own 26 to start the second half. It's the Devils on top of Galesburg, 7-0 on 103.9 The Fox. I'm Sean Seacrest along with Jim Hansen. Bo Beecraft taking care of us back in the 103.9 The Fox studios. And you can watch tonight's action online at QuincyJournal.com. Just get online, click the QJTV link, whether you have it on your smartphone, your iPad, your tablet, or you're at home on the laptop, we welcome you to watch with us online at QJTV.com. That was visual evidence why Galesburg went for it on fourth down. The Blue Devils first and 10 from their own 26, handed off to Robbins. Up the middle, he's out across the 30 to the 35 and may have a first down near the 36. Yeah, that's the first uh, good um, open field uh, yardage he was able to get after getting past the first level so far tonight up the middle. So nice pickup on first down, sets up a second and one, and I'm sure Coach Little and the offensive staff had a stern talking to to the offensive line about establishing the running game here in the second half. Well, and I like the explosive move by Robbins. He didn't wait. He came out and set the tone as a leader here in the second half. Give him nine on first down, 22 yards on eight carries. Devils second and one just shy of their own 34. Run it up inside. They've got the first down, pushing the pile out to the 39. Looks like a rugby scrum right now, Jim. Robbins has that first down as he picks up three yards. Well, two handoffs to Malik here to start the second half and a uh, pickup of 13 total yards. So set up a first down, move the sticks. When you were at Western, did you ever stay in shape in the offseason with a little rugby? I did not. I don't know anything about the game. Okay. Watch a little. If you like your, you, you got traditional full side rugby, or if you like the wide open game, you can catch some rugby sevens. At the 40, out to the 45, that's Osborne running inside. He's to the 47-yard line. It's a pickup of eight for the Blue Devils on first down. And number 61, Colin Dowers for Galesburg was on the bottom of the pile holding on to Osborne's ankle as he was drugged for about another five yards, and uh, the pile got there. But uh, another huge pickup on first down for the Devils. Offensive line firing off here in the second half. Paul, Prost. Lefevre, second and one. This is an ideal spot for a play caller uh, on the offensive side of the football. Blue Devils, second and one at their own 47-yard line. Going to keep it on the ground, hand it off, slam it into the line, off right tackle, and pick up a first down out to the 49-yard line on a short carry by Robbins. Well, I thought for sure he uh, got the first down. Two minutes gone Boy, by in this third on. quarter, and the Devils yeah, still up 7 nothing. They are just shy of midfield and have a new set of downs. So a couple first downs on this drive that began at their own 26-yard line has the Devils just shy of the 50 as they lead 7 nothing. Cardinals have broken on top of L.A., bottom of the third against Kershaw, 4 nothing. Wishbone behind Krikar, going to turn around and hand it off to Unmissig. He dances across the 50, down to the 45. Unmissig has a gain of six. Well, I actually saw Malik Robbins break out of the middle there at a fake dive to the uh, lead back in the wishbone, and I almost started yelling run because he stopped, and then I realized he didn't have the football. 
But uh, another wonderful pickup on first down. You know, the Devils have come out here so far with 9-9 uh, nine, nine, and I believe now 6 on uh, f uh, three first downs in this series. Blue Devils. Second down and four from just shy of the Galesburg 45-yard line. Back to the wishbone behind Cricard. They're going to fake it. Roll them out to the near side. It's a screen over the middle. It's complete. Blue Devils across the 40, just shy of the 36-yard line with the screen to Robbins. Well, what do you know? We caught him uh, in a, a run package on defense, was able to slip Robbins out of the backfield, pick up about 10 yards on the play. Nice check down by George Cacard. He had, uh, I couldn't see if it was Unmistake or Hoschlag deep behind Robbins, but that was covered, so he was able to check down to a secondary receiver out in the flat and pick up the first down. Wishbone behind Cricard again on first and ten. Handed off to Unmasig, running left. Dances up inside at the 35. He'll get down to the 32-yard line. And he picks up four yards, but there is a flag down. I think it might have been holding on uh, Pro Store, the tight end over on the left side. I don't think it was Osborne. Osborne came over and actually missed uh, uh, completing his block. So, unfortunately, Devil's first penalty comes at an inopportune time here after the first down. Now we'll march him back. Uh, you have first and about 20. Jim taking over the role of math scientist on the broadcast tonight. <laughs> Back so about to the, about the <laughs> Geltsburg 45-yard line. Don't tip Bo. He'll load up some sound <laughs> effects for you. And Ow. spice up the broadcast That's tonight. Blue Devils. Third and 18 from the 45 of the Silver Streaks after the 10-yard holding penalty. Pitch it outside to Osborne. Dances up inside after he reads his block. He's at the 40. He'll pick up five of those yards and bring up second and 13. 32 yards on six carries for Osborne. Blue Devils with Robbins, 25 yards on nine carries. Unmissig, 110 yards on seven carries. And Brock Miller, negative two on one carry. 8-18 to go, third quarter. Blue Devils leading 7-0. It's been like this since the 60-yard touchdown by Unmissig. Yeah, that followed up Osborne's fumble. Then the Blue Devil defense stopped Galesburg. After Galesburg got it first and 10 at the Blue Devil 42. Stopped him on downs inside the 15. Then the Blue Devils came back and scored. Wing T, Galesburg jumps into the neutral zone, and the Blue Devils will pick up five of those 10 penalty yards. That has just uh, been a wonderful play tonight for the Blue Devils, hasn't it? <laughs> it has, and it, it, give Kirkard some credit. You see his evolution in that aspect of the game. He's gotten more comfortable with it. Yeah, and uh, what he's most comfortable with is his lineman stayed put and didn't jump either. 7.53 to go third quarter. Now Blue Devils back to a much more manageable second and eight. They're no longer behind the sticks on second down. Spread wing T behind Cricard. Blue Devils from the near side. Hash marks handed up to Robbins. He's up the middle across the 30 and down to the 26. He was a couple of steps away from breaking that off left and heading right to the house. Yeah, that was downhill all the way. Picks up eight, maybe nine. Are they going to give him the first down here, or will there be a measurement? This is close. The referee is signaling Boy. to the chain gang on the far side. Sure. <sighs> Through our Blue Devil colored glasses, it looks like a first down, but they're going to bring the chains on. So we'll give Robbins nine yards on the carry, because it was or eight yards on the carry. It was second and eight. And either way, plus or minus a football length is going to resolve our down and distance. The chains say short by a couple inches. So the Devils will have third down and a short one. Blue Devils had third down and a short one once previously in this game in the first half and muffed the center quarterback exchange. So you got to be clean to start the play. You're going to go for a quarterback sneak or anything else. What on earth? They can't get the chain gang correct over there. They, they show the third down past the down marker. That's a, a pet peeve of mine, and I'll, I'll talk about that after the Blue Devils go for it. Third and one, leading 7-0, seven 7.44 to play third quarter. Under center, going to turn around, hand it off up the middle with Robbins. He's across the 25 to the 23, so a gain of three, and the Devils will have it first and 10. In this era of high-speed computers and Bluetooth, is a 10-yard length of chain still the most accurate distance measurement we can come up with? 
<laughs> it's a good question. Um, would you have just like a laser spotter over yes, there? Yes, laser. exactly. <clears throat> gotcha. If I can get a laser leveler off the shelf at my big box retailer for my residential use, you would think you could get, you know, some kind of laser distance measurement. Or we could incorporate the TV line onto the uh, field somehow, superimposed. They're it. working on that on QJTV right now. First and 10 from the 23. Oh, Devils uh, backed up with Unmusig. He runs it back to the 23-yard line and is able to pick up a strong no gain for the Blue Devils. Well, interesting uh, so far on this drive out of the uh, halftime break. Galesburg really has pinched and slanted their defense to the outside now, and it seems that Malik's having more success and the Devils are having more success towards the inner part of the uh, tackle box, and I'm talking specifically between the center guard tack or center guard uh, hole there, the one hole, two hole, three hole, um, you know, as opposed to going outside. I don't know... Uh, if Galesburg's going to try and take the uh, corners away and stick with this uh, scheme. Second and 10 from the 23, handed off to Robbins. Robbins running far side to the 20. They got a hold of his shirt as the Galesburg defense. He's down to the 19. Devils are in the red zone after a gain of four. Yeah, and Jacob Kelvin luckily didn't get, uh, got away with a late hit there around the pile. I thought uh, they were going to pull the hanky out, but sets up a third and five or six, and this is certainly a possession where we need to establish a two-score lead either by a touchdown or at least coming away with three points. They're down in five for the Devils as they give them the 18. Wishbone offense behind Cricard. He brings him up, going to pitch it outside to Osborne. He gets a leveling block at the 20. He's down to the 16, dances to the 15. I thought that play was going to go for big yards after the Blue Devils picked up a huge block, I believe, from Unmasig out of that wishbone and sprung Osborne on the corner momentarily. Yeah, the problem was he was running to the short side of the field, and uh, the pursuit and angle from Galesburg was there, and they just forced him to the sideline was able to use that as an extra defender. Now, key fourth down here. It looks like Coach Little is going to go for it, fourth and uh, three or four. You better hurry up and get a play in. And uh, if I was Galesburg, I'd be telling my defense to watch the football. They don't jump off sides. It's going to be fourth and two. They gave Osborne the 15 on that uh, out-of-bounds run to the near side. So the Devils, fourth and two from the Galesburg 15. Kirkard's been hammering out these long counts. I'd go quick snap here. Wing T sends a man outside. Kirkard's going to pitch it outside. That ball is on the ground. Osborne has fumbled again, and Galesburg's going to come away with it, whether it's via fumble or downs. Osborne puts it on the carpet for the second time tonight and loses both. Disappointing end of that drive. The Blue Devils were ready to pitch left and go student body left. And Osborne never secured the toss from Kirkard. So the Blue well, Devils yeah. now even in the turnover game with Galesburg. That's a six-minute, a six-minute, ten-second drive that came away with nothing. Blue Devils defense on the field. Galesburg starts first and ten from just shy of their own twenty. When I hand it off, run right there out to the twenty-four-yard line. Uh, they faked that pull with Isaacson very well, and they're going to get up very late with Holloway from the bottom of the pile. Holloway takes it out to the 24. He's just hard to stop. Everything you think you've got him for two yards, he gets six. 86 yards on 18 carries. Isaacson under center, turn around, give it to Holloway again. Across the 25, out to the 28. Holloway's close to the first down. Yeah, it looks like uh, they've stopped to uh, maybe bring in the measurement. He can just do it from here, from the booth with the laser. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight for Week 8 of Blue Devil High School Football on 103.9 The Fox. Sean Seacrest, Jim Hansen at the booth in Fling Stadium as the Blue Devils look to punch their ticket to the postseason. Five and two coming into tonight. Galesburg going to turn around, hand it to the Western Big Six's leading rusher in Holloway. He's across the 30 to the 32. It's a gain of four on first down. Five minutes to go, third quarter. Clock is running. Blue Devils leading 7 0. You know, Holloway's already carried 20 times for 94 yards tonight. He is the plow horse for this offense. Offset eye formation, now back to a traditional eye behind Isaacson. Range is the fullback, Holloway the tailback. 
Now they option Isaacson out from under center, back into the pistol. Range is going to have to go somewhere because he's in the way for the snap. Now they'll take him out to the far side flanker. Galesburg is confused. They'll take a timeout, as will we. 4.25 to go third quarter. Blue Devils on top of Galesburg at Fling Stadium. 7-0. You're listening to Blue Devil Football on 103.9 The Fox. You're listening to Blue All right, Devil. Just wanna... In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Everybody talks about Kershaw and Grinky and they're... point out is the Cardinals are the only franchise that Kershaw has a losing record against. They've beat him three times this year. I listened to yesterday, SVP and Rosella were just glaring and talking about the Cardinal bullpen. It's like, where are these guys? They, just, they always got guys. Out of the timeout, Galesburg going for it, second and seven from their own 33. Turn around, hand it off to the fullback. They're able to bring Range out across the 35 to the 40. He picks up eight, and J.J. Range moves the sticks for Galesburg. Unfortunately, there's a hanky down for a uh, penalty, which looks like it's personal foul, head to the, blow to the head on Quincy. Range picks up eight. He's got 56 yards on seven carries, yeah, tack and the 15. Devils tack on 15 with a first personal foul here tonight. Now three penalties on the Blue Devils, all in the third quarter for 30 yards. Boy, that is disappointing. We saw this team, the Blue Devils, go through some penalty problems, especially on the road in the Rock Island game and then against Moline last week. Didn't ultimately matter last week as the Devils outclassed Moline 35-5. to but still, these are penalty problems that you can't live with in the playoffs. Yeah, and Coach Little said, you know, um, we got to get better at that. You know, you could call that uh, on any team any time, but we seem to be the ones who get called against, and, the, you know, you just got to adjust. I formation behind Erickson. Turn around, give it to Holloway. Holloway dances at the line. He's hit at the 43, down to the 42, gain of two. And Galesburg operating in Blue Devil territory at the 42-yard line, coming up with second and eight. Devils on top, 7 nothing. Clock uh, down to now four minutes to go in the third quarter. What a gratuitous spot. That almost gave him three. Maybe we get an idea why Holloway's got great numbers. He's a great back, don't get me wrong. But he's gotten some great spots tonight. Single man behind Isaacson, twins to the near side, handed off to Range. Range across the 40. He's at the 35, dragging people down to the 32. J.J. Range, he just rips it off. A 10-yard gain. And the Blue Devils have not been balanced defensively, and they're not ready for that change of pace with Range. Yeah, and you're getting a nice push, guard center seal uh, to the next level, wash out the linebacker to that side. Bondin's chasing from behind, and Range is already by him for 10 yards. First and 10 for Galesburg at the Quincy 32. Handed off to Holloway across the 30. He's down to the 28-yard line for a gain of four. They'll take that every time. 100 yards on 22 carries now for Holloway. And unfortunately, 63 for Galesburg uh, gets up limping. Yeah, Jake that's McCreary. 5'9", 200-pound lineman. Is their center. That's something a quarterback doesn't want to have to deal with. It's changing centers in the middle of the game. Under three minutes to go third quarter now. Blue Devils still on top, 7-0, but Galesburg is driving. They've been in the red zone, but don't have any points to show for it. Turn around, hand it off to Holloway. He's hit the backfield, brought down at the 31-yard line. Blue Devils finally get a tackle for a loss. Yeah, Riverview and Lefevre were in on there. I think uh, this series so far on first and second down, Bew and Bondin have been coming on the center guard uh, gap on each side of the center, and that time Bew came untouched to uh, tackle for a loss, brings up a third and a long nine. Now, this is where we got gashed earlier on a run by Holloway. you got to be careful with range, too. They'll split range out to the near side, out of the shotgun. 
39. Isaacson, Holloway behind him. They want to throw. Isaacson's got time. Dances toward the far side corner. And the Devils knock it down to the end zone. Oh, that's just great. One-on-one -on -one defense on the far side as the Devils had Bilgery rolling that way. But were able to get some help from Rowan down in the corner. Thomas Damon there as well for the Blue Devils. So great defense on third down. Now Galesburg faced with fourth and nine. We know they don't have a kicker that is going to attempt what would essentially be a 48-yard field goal, so you might as well go for it here. Well, it's not going to get you much. And the thing is, at least the Devils so far, and those long passes, they've not turned and looked at the ball. They've turned their hips and ran with the wide receiver to get to cover the ball. Yeah, you don't want to get caught looking into the backfield. Trips to the near side. Isaacson is back in the pistol. Holloway's behind him. One man to the far side, going to turn around, fake the stretch. Now they're going to roll out to the near side, throw for all of it. It's a good look, and the Blue Devils tip it, but it's caught by Galesburg. What a catch on the near side by the Silver Streaks. Galesburg able to keep their concentration on Jake Ferguson, and Ferguson off the tip from Brock Miller. A circus catch at the back of the end zone, and it's 7-6. to six. Blue Devils on top, but Galesburg looking to add the extra point. 31 yards. A circus catch. That's the old, uh, you know, it's great you tipped it, but you got to bat it down. You got to get it on the ground. He was falling backwards and tipped it straight up in the air to the guy who was right behind him. Bad break, but you got to make the play and get that ball on the ground on fourth down. The extra point coming 39 yards on two of seven now for Erickson. The toe poke is into the line, and the Blue Devils will hold on to the lead. Seven to six. 2.03 to go, third quarter. Blue Devils will have it next. They lead Galesburg 7-6 on 103.9 The Fox. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing, and estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Six Blue Devil lead. They're about to get the ball back as the third quarter winds down with 2.03 to go. This crowd that was such a vocal part of the first half, small and cold though it may be, is now absolutely hushed here in the grandstands below us at Flynn Stadium. Toe poke. This is going to be taken by the Blue Devils up man, but it'll roll out of bounds. That'll be a penalty on Galesburg. It should result in phenomenal starting field position for the Blue Devils. Well, let's not underestimate the importance of that extra point. Uh, instead of a tie game right now, Devils up one. They certainly need to, you know, extend that lead. Two minutes to go here in the third. We drove down and couldn't convert on our last fourth down because we put the ball on the ground. And uh, here tonight, Devils certainly losing the, well, I don't know, where are they with the interceptions, uh, are they behind in the turnover? Uh, it's uh, even two, now. Two? Yeah. The Osborne fumbles. And then two interceptions. And then the Shuddy and Creasy interceptions. That's right. So the Blue Devils ahead only because they're sound in the kicking game right now. They'll start with it first and ten at their own 38-yard line, 2.03 to go, third quarter. Wing T behind Cricard, put a man in motion, handed off to Osborne. He dances near side, has the corner, out to the 40, the 45, gashes his way to the 50, into Galesburg territory and down to the 47. He's able to pick up 19 on first down. Yeah, nice run, and Jordan Osborne was able to get to the corner there and set up his blocks and follow uh, Unmissing to the corner, and I think it was uh, Lafitte, no, Jacob Calvin pulling around. The point is, he better protect that football. Ball security is important now, especially here in the waning minutes of the third quarter into the fourth. We cannot afford to put the ball on the ground. Minute 50 to go, third quarter. Blue Devils first and 10 into Galesburg territory at the 47. Turn around, hand it to Robbins. Robbins fumbles it, and Galesburg has jumped on top of it. Robbins is absolutely blown up in the backfield. Galesburg gets in with Adam Winbigler, the junior lineman, and I thought Winbigler was on top of it, but the referee says Robbins got it back on the bottom of the pile. There was a two-man pile there. 
and Robbins somehow came away with the football. I've seen a lot, and I normally see a lot go against us. That ball was not handled off properly. Kirkard turned the wrong way. Robbins dropped it, and 66 for Galesburg was on top of the football. Second and 10 for the Blue Devils. New life. They're going to go double hand off. It's on the ground again. So two handoff, two fumbles in the backfield for the Blue Devils as Unmusig tried to turn the corner, running right to left before he secured the football on the double handoff. 50 here's seconds a, here's to go. Here's a newsflash. Do not run the double handoff again tonight. We can't hold on to the football. Why would we try two handoffs when we can't right now complete one handoff? 35 seconds to go. Blue Devils will one, run one more play here at the end of the third quarter at least. Devils come to the line. It's going to be second and 13 at midfield. Out of the eye. Back to pass is Krikard. Sets his feet. Slings it across the middle. Intercepted and dropped. Oh, Galesburg had the interception on the fingertips of Ryan Darby, the senior D lineman. He dropped back into coverage, found a soft spot, and nearly picked off Kirkard. He just dropped it. And the Blue Devils live dangerously on three consecutive downs. They will now have to punt this away from midfield. I don't know who he was trying to throw that to. It looked like Hoslog over the middle, but there was no window there, and he, was, he dang near hit 44 for Galesburg right in the numbers. 24 seconds to go in the third quarter, and the Blue Devils are punting it away with Unmusig. Unmusig nearly run into, no flag. It's a high, soft punt. Takes a Blue Devil bounce at the 20, down to the Galesburg 17, and the Silver Streaks of Galesburg will have first and 10 from their own 17. The Blue Devils trying to hold on. Jim talked about it in the first half. You want to be an Alleman, you want to be a Rock Island, you got to have that mentality and put the hammer down on teams that you think you are superior to. The Blue Devils have not done that tonight. Through turnovers and fumbles, they've kept Galesburg in this game, a game that Galesburg has shown no inclination toward taking away from the Devils unless the Devils hand it to them. And the Devils tried to on those last three downs. Isaacson up under center, 13 seconds to go, first and 10. Hand it off, they're going to go far side with the fullback as they run with range to start the series. He's out for the 25, that's a pickup of 8 and the end of the third quarter. We go to the fourth quarter, the Blue Devils leading by the slimmest of margins, 7-6 over Galesburg on 103.9 The Fox. The Blue Devils. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing, and estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Stadium on 103.9 The Fox. I'm Sean Seacrest along with Jim Hansen. It is just after 9 o'clock and the Blue Devils are hanging on like it's one minute to midnight. 7-6 over Galesburg. Galesburg turns around, hands it off second and three. They'll be stopped short with Holloway and the ball is free. Scoop, score by Bondin. No flag is down, but the officials are not signaling touchdown. Instead, the referee has his knee down where the ball carrier Holloway was at the 26-yard line. That is a yard short of a first down and a gain of two if this play is indeed blown dead. Coach Little wants to know why no whistle was blown if indeed the runner was down. Well, his knee was down. I think they're trying to say his forward progress was stopped. But that ball was stripped out of there and ripped out before the whistle blew. <clears throat> that was so a terrible call. Blue Devils, bad break. As Galesburg's allowed to hold on to it, they'll have a third down and two coming up after Holloway gets a yard. 
Third down and a long one now. The middle is vacated. The Blue Devils looking at this offset eye. Turn around, hand it to Holloway. Holloway's going to be close. He pounds his way out to the 27. Ooh. I don't think he got it. Let's see what this is going to be. I don't think he got it. He didn't get it. But I guess uh, going back to that last play when Bondin stripped it out, most people listening could say, well, now we're one-to-one, -one, we're even, because Galesburg fell on that one that they had that Quincy got. So I don't know if the officials were trying to equal things up. They did a nice job if they were. This is short where they have it now. They're going to bring the chain gang on to measure for a fourth down. Jim, we're going to have a split decision on our hands. This just in, dispatchers have been called to send authorities to two different locations as two muggings happen tonight. Quincy Notre Dame final over West Hancock, 54 to 6. Rock Island over Moline, 47 to 7. Mm. Wow. So paperwork will be filed in triplicate from both locations. Now it's going to be a fourth down for Galesburg from their own 27 yard line. Watch the football. <laughs> fourth down and one. Blue Devil defense is appealing to this crowd that's been quiet in the second half on a cold and damp night. Trying to bring them to life at Flint Stadium. Malik Bondin does some jumping jacks in the middle of the field. He's ready to go. Five down linemen for the Blue Devils. Eye formation behind Erickson for Galesburg. He's going hard count on fourth and one. Blue Devils don't bite. Galesburg's going to option out of it. Isaacson looks to the far side sideline. They may have to use a timeout here. 10.38 on the clock. Erickson feels confused. And now Isaacson's going to call the timeout. Blue Devils stay disciplined. Don't jump into the neutral zone. Galesburg calls a timeout. And they'll have another attempt at fourth and one. You're listening to Blue Devil football. They lead Galesburg 7-6 on 103.9 The Fox. You're listening to... In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is financial services representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Galesburg out of the timeout, comes to the line at their own 27 for a fourth and one. Trailing by one, they're going to go for it. Galesburg with Isaacson out of the pistol, trying to draw the Blue Devils into the neutral zone. Now he'll option back for the punt. It's a low snap, and he gets a quick one away. away. The Blue Devils will just let this bounce. It takes a sideways bounce, and the Devils will have possession at their own 49-yard line near midfield. What a <coughs> mental win for the Blue Devil defense. They had two separate occasions where they could have been drawn offside, but they stayed disciplined on the front line, and because of that, they get the ball back at midfield with 10 and a half to go in a game they lead by one, seven to six. Yeah, and uh, they really bailed out the offense from all the uh, or from the uh, turnover there, and uh, not being able to convert. And uh, good stand by the Blue Devil defense. Now our offense has got to do something with it. You got to take this down. Yeah, we got to quit. You got a short field, half of the football field here, and you can't keep putting it on the deck. Wing T out of the two tight end set, far side. Blue Devils moving right to left. Blue Devils get stood up at the point of attack, slither through to the 50 yard line for a gain of two. Look like some extracurricular activities after the run by Robbins. And the Blue Devils going to have second and eight. Well, Robbins is limping again, so now we, we've got the. Uh, Potential ankle injury again, but you know what's interesting? We talk about good football teams, and you rattled off the score Moline had tonight uh, against Rock Island. Rock Island put 56 up on this team we're playing here tonight. Under 10 minutes to play now. Blue Devils go wishbone on second and eight. They're going to run it to the near side with Unbasig. Unbasig has the corner, the first down, the 40 to 35, and he's shoved out of bounds on the near side by Holloway. That's a big run for the Blue Devils. They pick up the first down from their own 49-yard line all the way down to the 34 to gain a 17 for Runmasig. Now 127 yards on the night for Runmasig. 7-6, Blue Devils on top of Galesburg. And you're right, Jim, that crossed my mind. You know, Rock Island beat Moline by 40. Blue Devils beat them last week by 30. 
So you get two lopsided scores there, but Rock Island put up 56 on this Galesburg team. Blue Devils are struggling here at home. On a pitch, out of the wishbone. Get it outside to Osborne. He's on his feet to the 30. Now the 25, but Juke inside the 20. And it's a big pick up for Osborne. He stepped out at the 21. It's still a gain of 12 as the Blue Devils are knocking on the door to the red zone. Yeah, that was nothing but speed and individual effort there, getting around two tacklers that looked like he was going to be ankle tackled at about the line of scrimmage, if not a yard loss, and was able to bounce it to the outside, make another move, and still get some open field running and set up the first down. First and 10 at the 21 of Galesburg for the Blue Devils. Nine and a half to go in the ball game. The Blue Devils' only touchdown of the night, a 60-yard carry by Unmusig. He has now 127 yards on nine carries for Galesburg. 31-yard pitch and catch from Isaacson to Ferguson, but they squib the extra point, and that's the difference in this game. Devils, first and 10 from the 21. Far side hash mark, handed off in the backfield to Brock Miller. Brock Miller fights his way just shy of the 20. It'll be a gain of one, if any. They're going to give him no gain at the 21. Brock Miller, two carries now, negative two yards. Yeah, Galesburg has done a heck of a job here in the second half on pinching and getting uh, contained to the outside. Uh, you know, Osborne certainly had a nice run there before that, but Brock Miller got swarmed under by four guys. Yeah, and the Blue Devils went with a whole different package that time. Bew was in as a blocker in the backfield. Brock Miller was the carrier. Now they'll rotate those two guys back to the near side sideline. Nine minutes to go with the clock running. Devils up 7-6. Second and 10 from the Galesburg 21. Wishbone again. Going to turn around, fake the handoff, roll it out near side. Little pitch over the defense. It's caught inside the 10, down to the 5, and out of bounds at the 6. Boy, that was a bit of a break for the Blue Devils as Robbins had it knocked out of his hands at the 6. But it's out of bounds after a gain of 15 on the pass from Kirkard. Yeah, nice little rollout. Run Robbins into the near flat, Hoslog into the deep flat. You got your choice. Kirkard finally, you know, put a little nice touch on that. Just lofted it over to the first defender right to Robbins. Complete the pass. He completed the pass. He was able to turn it up and get a few more extra yards. But the first thing you want to do is make sure you give him a chance to catch it, and he did. First down, Devils. Goal to go. Six-yard line, 847 here in the fourth. Jim has set it up. The Blue Devils moving right to left. Near side hash marks. Wing T behind Cricard. Going to turn around and hand it off. Right up the middle goes Robbins. He's smelling the goal line. He's there, and he is shy. He's on the six-inch line after a gain of five and a half. And the one thing you can say about Robbins, injured or no, he's got a great nose for the goal line. Yeah, and uh, that was close. I don't know if you were able to see that uh, down in the corner, Sean. The ball came out. They were ruling and blowing the whistle that he was down. But the concern is I think he got close to that goal line, and young uh, ball carriers, you hate trying to reach the ball out over the goal line. And if it gets knocked out and the official can't see that you're even close to that, that's a fumble. You know, take the yard, you're, you know. Blue Devils from inside the one. They have had fumbleitis tonight. Can they hold on to it and go up 13-6? Devils from the one. Going to go quarterback sneak, and Krakow is into the end zone. Young George Krakow, the fourth, is into the end zone on a quick quarterback sneak after a successful snap, and the Devils go up 13-6. All important extra point now. This would make it a uh, eight-point game, which would force Galesburg to, if they score, go for two. Based on their last kicking performance, I would imagine they would have done that anyway. The extra point by Unmusig to come. 8-19 to go in the fourth quarter. Nevels looking for the extra point. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up and through. Devils go up 14-6. You're listening to Blue Devil Football on 103.9 The Fox. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is Financial Services Representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Cardinals are going to lose this game. Cart Lori just said she's feeling it now. She's the ultimate jinx. It's a Remind her, Red Sox down five. 
nothing. Tigers. I got a story seven. about that on the next break. 8 19 to go in the ball game. Blue Devils up over Galesburg. Silver Streaks 14 to 6. Thanks to that one yard touchdown quarterback sneak by George Cricard. Jim, you said short field, you got to put it on the board here. They did 52 yards. Yeah, you know, ran, uh, ran some nice plays, got some positive yards, no penalties, uh, didn't hurt ourselves. Most importantly, didn't put the ball on the ground. Blue Devils ready to kick it away with Unmusig. He'll boot it away from the right, moving to the left. Unmusig hits a low line drive into the end zone, and it's a touchback for Galesburg. They'll start first and 10 at their own 20. So if you're Galesburg, where do you go here? Is it still a steady diet on Holloway so. and Range? Absolutely. you got eight minutes to go. That's a boatload of time in this game. You're only down one score. Stick to what you're doing. Dose of Holloway, dose of Range. I wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden make Isaacson become a passer. I'd, I'd stick with our running game. All right. Dr. Hansen is weighed in on the dosage that he expects <laughs> from the Silver Streaks heavy, here. Heavy, heavy dosage. Silver Streaks come to the line behind Isaacson. He motions range off to the left and Holloway to the right. Trips on the far side. Man in motion. That's Holloway. Going to go with the stretch play. It's kept by Isaacson. Comes back to the near side. Stutter step. He'll be drugged down across the 20 at the 23. Blue Devils did a nice job of reading that and stringing it out. Yeah, and what's visibly noticeable about the Galesburg offense is the difference in speed between Isaacson and Holloway. Had Holloway gotten that corner, he's tackled five, six, seven, uh, probably closer to 10 yards down. Isaacson was only able to muster three, and all he had to do was beat uh, – no offense to Quentin Lefevre and uh, our defensive ends, but uh, you second know. and seven, going to hand it off to Holloway this time. He's at the 25 and stopped there. It's a short gain of two. Yeah, I think Bondin was in on that play. Back to 100 yards for Holloway. He got there, then the loss of three, then runs of one and two. 100 yards on 25 carries tonight for Holloway. Yes, the Blue Devils give up a 100-yard rusher, but it's a steady diet to Holloway. I mean, he's getting. He's got 25 carries, and we got eight minutes to go in this game. Yeah, Bondin's now on the bench. He's out. Third down and a long four for Galesburg. Man in motion. They're going to fake it. Throw it back against the grain into the flat. Oh. Blue Devils sniff it out, no, and they, they can't make the tackle in the open field. Give it up across the 30, out to the 32, and Iker is able to slip away from a tackle for a loss off the long stretch handout and move the sticks. That, that was almost impossible that Brock Miller missed that tackle. He came flying in, had him dead to rights for a six-yard loss, and it looks like he buried his head into the ground and didn't look up, and the guy just went right over him and got the first down. Gain is six, but it's enough for a first down. First and ten from the 32, handed off to Holloway. Holloway pushes through the pile at the 35. Flag flies in on the far side at the end of the play. This could be a face mask against the Blue Devils, and Holloway is down at the 38-yard line after a gain of six. Another headshot on Quincy. How is that that we get called for that? How is that? No one else has ever been called on that the entire year against us. We've been called twice for helmet-to-helmet -helmet head blows. So the Blue Devils give up another 15, 15 yards. yards. The gain is six by Holloway. And then tack on the easy 15. That's going to put Galesburg into Blue Devil territory at the Blue Devil 46-yard line. Let me just make a point here. Now, you know, I'm not picking on Brock Miller, but the point is we had that guy dead to rights, third down and six. It would have been fourth and seven. We don't make the play. Now we throw on 15. We have a compounding effect on ourselves that we just don't make huge plays to put teams away. Handed off to Holloway again. Hit at the 45, and he squirts forward to the 43. You didn't give the bench time to recognize you before your monologue. What? I, I oh, was going to yeah, say the sorry. bench recognizes. <coughs> Bondin's on the sideline, you know, um, getting his ankle looked at now. In for him, we've got 26, Thomas Damon at DB, and uh, he's moved up into the middle linebacker spot. Yeah, we've seen Damon most often as a depth running back. Handoff goes down to the 35, and then it's the first down, down to the Blue Devil 32-yard line. Just a quick hitter off the far side for range. And Range is just able to hit those holes quickly, be the alternate choice for Holloway, and he picks up eight yards. Steady dose of this running game. They lead the 
a leading rusher in the conference. You know what? We can't stop him right now. Oh, Twins my to the goodness near side, And whistles blow before the snap. Twins on the near side in the I formation behind Isaacson is the lineup for Galesburg. And let's get the call from the official here this evening at Flynn Stadium. Flag was thrown by the side judge on the Blue Devils sideline. 6.16 to go. It'll be a five-yard penalty against Galesburg for illegal motion. 30 yards of penalties on six penalties tonight against Galesburg, all of the five-yard variety. Until that time, Galesburg had a lot of pep in their step and had some uh, uh, certain momentum here. The sidelines jump and, uh, up and jumping around, and, you know, they're, they're really running it down our throats on this drive with six minutes to go here in the fourth. Ferguson, the man who caught the touchdown, has been optioned out wide to the near side. Offset eye behind Isaacson. Going to turn it around to range. Range, flag flies from the umpire, and Isaacson to range. Range is able to pick up three yards, but we'll see if this is going to stand. Holding on Galesburg. That'll be a 10-yard spot foul. So this is going to well, result in the loss of about 11. You, you know, you went to earlier in the broadcast the inopportune moments in which the penalties for Galesburg have come. First and 10 on Quincy's 32-yard line, and they've taken two back-to-back -back penalties now, set up a first and 25 from Quincy's 41-yard line. A uh, 46-yard line, excuse me. I mean, boy, that's a drive killer right there. First and as they spotted at the 46-24 officially. Twins to the near side, one to the far side. Isaacson under center, turn around, hand it off to Range. Range hit at the 45 and stopped for a gain of just one. I think that might have been Schluter down there. Um, was it? No, Quentin Lefevre from his end position just met him head on in the hole there and was able to stand him up and hold him for no gain. Big, big first down stop. So the Blue Devils bring it up second and long, to say the least, for Galesburg. Yeah, they're named the Silver Streaks for all of the train traffic that comes through Galesburg. Still, in this modern age, over 200 trains a day cross through that area. And they are a train ride away from first down. Shotgun snap, under pressure, thrown out into the flat. It's either incomplete or a loss, and it's better that it's incomplete for Galesburg as it was short of the line of scrimmage to Iker on the far side. And Isaacson now 3 <coughs> of 9 in the passing game for 45 yards including the 31-yard touchdown now, to Ferguson. third and 23, Sean, what's the golden rule? Third and Texas. Don't let anyone get behind you. They've got everyone split out, trips to the near side. Every, everyone's within 12 yards of the line of scrimmage as we speak. Out of the shotgun, quads to the near side. Isaacson rolls out under no pressure. Now pressure coming from Holschlag. He's going to have to make a move in a hurry, and it's going to be caught, but not for a first down at the Blue Devil 35-yard line. Still behind the sticks after the catch on the near side was Moss, and that's complete, but only for a gain of 10. Well, Holschlag was chasing him down from the backside and got him right as he threw it away. I was wondering if that official thought that might have been a little, little, little late, excuse me, but uh, nice completion along the sideline. Uh, to number 81, who caught that uh, Moss. Moss. Sets up a fourth and 12. Huge turning point in this football game right here. Four and a half to go. The clock is running. The Devils are up 14 to six. Fourth and 12 for Galesburg. Isaacson. He's got a personal protector. That's range. Trips to the far side. Isaacson rolls near side. Going to throw it short. It's complete at the 23. And that's going to be a first down on the comeback route to Iker. And How this is on earth on fourth and Blue Devils looking at the spot, hoping that the referee will bail them out where their secondary couldn't. The sticks are all the way on the far side. And they're going to at least call for a measurement if it's not a sure first down because it's fourth down. So let's see what the call is. The spot is on the near side sideline and the Devils benches in the way. They're not going to call for the sticks. It's a first down. Galesburg's sideline is jumping up and down. Their players are happy. Uh, why wouldn't you be? That was a first and 24, folks. Second and 24. Lau a third down. And 12. No, it was, the, uh, no, it was a thir third and 24. Four. They completed Completion. the 10 and a fourth down. They just completed that. For 13. That's terrible. At the edge defense. of the red zone. That's 
It's a mishandled snap. Back to dive on it is Isaacson, and he's back at the Blue Devil 28-yard line. That's a loss of seven on the bad shotgun snap. So Galesburg's inopportune mistakes come back to bite him now on this occasion. Isaacson, loss of seven. That'll bring up second and 16. Trips to the far side, single man to the near side. Holloway in the backfield. They'll hand it off to Holloway. He swings his weight up to the 25, now the 24. Gain of four for Holloway, but the clock continues its march toward all zeros. 3.40 to go. Blue Devils leading 14-6, but Galesburg is on the march. Well, certainly two down territory for Galesburg. Third and 12 here. <clears throat> Sideline uh, clapping and cheering them on. And two big stands here for the Devils defense. We have got to get better in our pass protection. I would watch range in the slot. Holloway is the one man back with Isaacson. They're going to hand it to Holloway. Holloway cuts it at the 20. He's up to the 15, running free to the 10. Cuts it back at the 5. And Holloway is short of the end zone at the 1. But it's going to be first and goal from inside the 1 for Galesburg as Holloway picks up 22 on the carry. Terrible tackling. Terrible tackling. 136 yards on 29 carries for Holloway. And the Devils are going to have to stop Galesburg either on this set of downs and shut them out or when they go for two. The Blue Devils are up 14-6. Galesburg first and goal from inside the one. Moving left to right, Galesburg has found enough on this drive late in the game that they're going to challenge to tie. Isaacson under center. They're going to turn around, hand it off to Range. He's into the end zone. Range. Makes it a two-point game, 14-12. The one-yard carry, 83 yards on the night for range. The one-yard plunge. And we are a moment away from the most important play in this game. This is going to be Galesburg's attempt for a two-point conversion to tie. With a stop, the Blue Devils can run out the clock with a few first downs with 2.50 to go and win an unnecessarily tight ball game at home in week eight. Otherwise, they're going to need a score in the final seconds. Devils trying to stop the two-point conversion. Range is on his right. Isaacson comes to the near side. He's looking into the flat, and it's through the fingertips of his intended target. It was Moss on the near side, and the Blue Devils will stay on top 14-12 to 12, thanks to an incomplete pass that was open on the two-point conversion. Yeah, and... Uh you know, they'd also run, they ran Moss uh, to the deeper part of the end zone. They ran Holloway on a little rollout uh, with Creasy on him, and he was able to, Creasy was able to uh, defend Holloway on the rollout. Now, here's the thing. This is wonderful that we're up 14-12, but unfortunately, there's two minutes and 51 seconds to go in this ballgame, and there is by no means a victory in hand right now for the Blue Devils. But we know this as well. Galesburg <laughs> does not have an extraordinary kicking game to pin the Devils deep and look for something to happen. I'm expecting Galesburg to go onside kick here. Probably not a bad call. You got to be ready. They squibbed it to the 40 the last time, and it rolled out of bounds at the 38. So, I mean, it was only a 22-yard kick on the ground. It has to go 10 yards before you can recover it as the kicking team. And with 2.50 to go, if I'm Galesburg, this is it. I mean, a loss tonight in, in my season, as far as the playoffs go, is over. Blue Devils are back to receive on the west end of the field. That's the right side. They're moving right to left here in the fourth quarter, leading 14-12. Here it comes. Now, the rule in high school is different for those of you than in the pros. You cannot overload one side. That is correct. Your kicker is the 11th man, and you have to have five on each side, Jim is telling us. That's in the, uh, I think, in the pros. I'm not sure if that's in college. Right now, Galesburg has nine men on the far side and one on the near side, as well as the kicker, Isaacson. Isaacson kind of does it all. <clears throat> They're going to take it to the far side. Isaacson. He's going to top this, and hopefully it'll spring up. 
the Devils with their hands team on the far side. He gets a good squib on it. It is loose. It is in Devil territory. Galesburg goes for it. It's at the Blue Devil 43-yard line. The Silver Streaks think they have it. The Devils are despondent, and Galesburg has recovered their onside kick at the Blue Devil 43. Devils defense is going to have to hold him again because the Blue Devils special teams came up dry. Galesburg recovers their onside kick at the Blue Devil 43. Why would we just let that go through and no one step up to catch it? I don't understand that. Poor execution. Well, <clears throat> the Blue Devils playoff lies hold in the balance right here. I mean, plain and simple, your defense better start making some plays. I don't know if Malik Bondin's leg isn't broken, why isn't he out there? It's a handoff, dancing in the backfield. He's Holloway. He's hit at the 40 after a gain of four. 140 yards for Holloway tonight on 30 carries. Two and a half to play. 40-yard line, second and six in Blue Devil territory. The turnover game has bitten both teams tonight. Right now we're even. Each team has lost it twice. Galesburg on two interceptions. The Devils on two fumbles. Handed off to Holloway. Holloway's down to the 35. He's got a first down deep down to the 32. Holloway, just a one-man wrecking ball right now, and the Blue Devils don't have an answer. Devils. Watches Galesburg sets up first and ten at the Blue Devil 33. This is after the Devils could not handle a Galesburg onside kick. Trips to the near side. One man back. Feed it to Holloway. He's at the 30. He's ridden down at the 26. Well, he's ridden down. Unfortunately, he's ridden down seven, eight yards after the, the play is uh, past the line of scrimmage. I mean, the problem is we're not getting any penetration. We're not stopping Holloway. They're just going to eat the clock up and, and hold for the last play. Trips to the near side, one to the far side. Holloway Here is back, Holloway. handed to him again. This time he's hitting the hole, finally. and he's hit back at the 27-yard line. That's going to be a loss Bowles of one. finally stepped up and made a play. <coughs> Third down. Third and three now. No reason for Galesburg to rush. They're, you know, they, they don't care. There's a one minute 26 to go. they got two timeouts. They're going to win it or lose it on this possession. Quincy will not see the ball again. Third and four now from the 27-yard line. Trips to the near side. Isaacson back to pass. Isaacson looks downfield. He lost it into the corner. Oh. It's knocked up and incomplete. The Devils didn't learn their lesson from the earlier pass into the end zone, which was tipped up and ultimately caught by Ferguson. The Devils bat it up instead of down. Give extra life for the streaks, but it falls incomplete. In the end zone, a minute 10 to go. Fourth and four from the Blue Devil 26. The game on balance right now. Blue Devils leading 14-12. Same thing, two guys are going for the same ball. One of them needs to call the other one off. They both tipped it. The wide receiver could have caught it. Fourth down, I'd uh, watch for a steady dose of the run. Range and timeout going to be taken by the Blue Devils on fourth and four. We'll step aside for a quick moment. The Devils lead Galesburg 14-12 at Fling Stadium. Playoff berth on the line. It's fourth and four for the streaks next on 103.9 The Fox. In the past, everyone came to you and you did business at your own kitchen table. This is financial services representative Michael Libman with MetLife in Quincy. I still make house calls I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. Nothing top of the six. <laughs> Cardinals blowing it out. Now back to Blue Devil football on the fun. <coughs> 70 seconds to go in the ball game. Devils lead it 14-12. Galesburg is on the march. The Devils have just taken a timeout. It's fourth down and four for Galesburg at the Blue Devil 26. Galesburg has to convert to stay in this game. Watch the football. Galesburg went for it all, throwing it into the end zone on third down. Now where will they go on fourth down and four from the Devil 26? Twins right and left. Isaacson in the backfield alone. They're going to roll the dice, and why not at three and four? 
Isaacson looking for help. Now range motions into the backfield behind him. Set up the power eye is Holloway. The conference's leading rusher is back there. Feed it to range. Range is hit and dropped. Back at the 30. The Devils get it on downs. And they will jump from the frying pan into the fire and finally out to safety. The Devils made it needlessly close tonight. But now with just 64 seconds to go, it looks like they'll emerge victorious at home over Galesburg. Wow, the uh, play call <clears throat> was curious um, for the streaks. Not that they went into the eye but to try and run a fullback dive for four yards straight up the middle with range when you have Holloway. Maybe they thought Holloway was going to be focused on since he was a leading rusher, you know, coming into the game, and Quincy would key on him. But nice penetration, defensive line and linebackers, great push. Finally, just pushing that line of scrimmage back Finally, into the backfield. Right. So the Blue Devils come to the line a minute four. Galesburg can stop it twice. Devils with Krikard under center and the wing tee behind him. Turn around, hand it off, bust it out across the 35 to the 40. Robbins on the run, protects the football to the 45, dives out to the 47, stays in bounds, and that should do it. Take a knee. Yeah, Robbins picks up 17, and he finally ran free here this evening. And right now they've got two timeouts, 25-second clock. They need to take a knee for three straight. Well, That's all you have to do. Uh, you're gonna the clock is running now. Yeah. Galesburg can stop it twice. Take a couple of knees and you're good. Galesburg shows no intent to stop it. Oh, we They're still got to run a play. Roll. The Blue Devils out of the huddle. I don't know if they were thinking that Galesburg was going to stop it or if they're willing to just run it down and take the five-yard penalty Little here. going to call a timeout? I don't know. I would just take the five-yard penalty here. Blue Devils burn one of two timeouts, 30 seconds to go on the clock. Blue Devils have it first and 10 at their own 47-yard line, leading 14 to 12. That's curious. Picking high school football is one of the tougher things to do. But of all the picks I've seen, from Galesburg to Quincy to the Quad Cities to Peoria, none of them picked Galesburg. And the smallest spread I saw in the Blue Devil win was 14. Now, this series, we know going back the last seven years, hasn't been decided by a margin bigger than 15. And I don't think this is a Quincy team that is adroit at putting away opponents Rock Island style, like you talked about earlier, Jim. But it looks like the Devils, in a league in which you don't need gaudy scores to impress pollsters, will sneak out of here with the win tonight if they can execute the basics of a victory formation. 30 seconds to go. Cricard takes a knee. Well, hard-fought game tonight by both teams, um, Galesburg and Quincy, and, well, Galesburg called a timeout. Yeah, well, why not? Use your two timeouts, something may happen. So the Blue Devils are going to hold on and sneak back to their beds this evening with a 6-2 and two record and a berth in the IHSA state playoffs. Yeah, congratulations to the Blue Devils and Coach Little. First time they'll be back there since, I believe, 2011. Was 10? that the Manuka trip? Um, yes. In which we froze. made the big board, oh sat outside. Gosh. Sat in the, in the yes. home stands as we froze. <laughs> yeah, uh, take a knee here, get to the house, get home with a victory. And, uh, you know, next week you're arguably now playing for a home playoff game. Blue Devils Possibly. will take on Richwoods. They have been on a heater since starting the season. Lackluster. Another yeah, I, knee by Cricard. I don't know. I didn't hear the score on that richwoods Alleman game tonight. So, Yeah, Bo, if you can, check that out for our post-game show. We'd love to have it. Richwoods and Alleman playing here tonight. The final seconds tick off the clock. Galesburg won't stop it again. The Devils, like Harry Houdini, hung upside down in the water torture tank, escape with an M plausible victory here this evening. Our final 14 to 12. Quincy over Galesburg. The Blue Devils improved to 6 and 2 and have a berth in the IHSA postseason while Galesburg is eliminated falling to 3 and 5 on the season. Coming up the postgame show is next on 1039 The Fox. In the past everyone came to the with MetLife in Quincy. 
I still make house calls. I'll confidentially ask you questions to help you make decisions about your life insurance, IRAs, long-term care insurance, investing in estate planning. Call me and I'll come sit with you at your kitchen table. MetLife offers financial services and life insurance. Call Michael Libman. He makes house calls. You adore and love was made for me. 